Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts. Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference. Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Coat, Hikigaya Hukuman in the Classroom of the Elite. Chapter 1, Chapter 001, Kill the Game Directly. Youth is a lie, a sin. Those who sing praises of youth continuously deceive themselves and their surroundings, always affirming their environment. Even some fatal failures are regarded as symbols of youth, becoming a past worth reminiscing. Participation in crimes such as theft and gang activities can be called youthful vigor. If you fail an exam, just say that school is not just for learning. In front of their word youth, any general knowledge or social norms can be distorted. For them, whether it's lies, secrets, past crimes or failures, they are all just seasonings of youth. Moreover, they will find uniqueness from their wrongdoings and failures. Their own failures are all part of youth, while others' failures are not youth but complete failures. In summary, conversely, those who do not sing praises of youth are where true justice lies. My conclusion is. Fools who enjoy this thing called youth, should go and freaking die. Underscore. P.S. Harim. FCK go away, the male lead is not very strong. Underscore. April. Cherry blossoms are falling. On the bus to advanced nurturing high school. Hikigai Hukuman sits in the middle single seat, looking at the dead fish eyes outside the window with tears in his eyes. This is because from today on. For these three years, he will not see his cute sister Komaki. Advanced nurturing high school. ANHS is Japanese top-notch prestigious high school with a national background. This school is established by the Japanese government and offers tuition-free education. After graduation, you can also have the opportunity to choose your career freely. Whether it's a star, a national athlete, or politics, you can choose freely. The only drawback. Probably only that this is a fully enclosed school. Unless there is a special reason, even family members cannot contact. But correspondingly, the school is equipped with various entertainment facilities such as cinemas, karaoke, gyms and so on. But this one drawback. For Hikigaya Hukuman who loves his sister so much, it is absolutely intolerable. It's a pity that I received the admission notice from High Development. As a man whose family status is inferior to a cat, I have no choice at all. Under the threat of parents refusing to pay high school miscellaneous fees, to pursue my dream of becoming a house husband while continuing my education until university graduation. I can only reluctantly accept the fact that I am admitted to ANHS. I submitted a blank paper in the entrance exam, but I still got admitted, there must be something wrong with this school. Hikigaya wants to cry a bit. Even in the interview session, he said a lot. If I'm failed, my parents may change their minds, right? Such a perfect zero-point countermeasure unexpectedly failed inexplicably. Just at this moment, the bus stopped at the station. An old grandmother walked up to the bus tremblingly and stopped next to him. Her hands like dead wood clung to the handrail and she looked unstable. And the people inside the bus. As if I didn't see it at all, I was indifferent to myself. Hikigai was wandering outside for half a day. As soon as I think about not being able to see my sister for three years, I have an urge to cry. But once I cry out, I might be regarded as a fool by others. I feel so ashamed that I want to die. Absolutely not. Thinking about it. Hikigaya got up directly and walked towards the last row of empty seats, planning to cry for his sister well. Thank. The old grandmother was about to speak. Just watching the young man in front of him walk silently to sit down behind him without any intention of talking. Their world is so sinister. If Komaki is deceived by that scum man, what should Komaki do? Hikigaya let out a weak sobbing sound as if he had inadvertently killed the game. Advanced Nurturing High School. Located on an artificial island. The entire school area is equivalent to a small town. The surrounding streets are full of flowers and beautiful environment. 
modern shops are scattered on both sides. It's simply impeccable as a place where you will live for three years. It's just that it can't be compared with Chiba Prefecture at all. If you want to establish an enclosed school, you should learn more from Chiba Prefecture and it would be best if you could directly copy one. And also, I only saw one Raymond shop. It's Jiro Raymond. You know Raymond is the soul of Japanese men. A school without Raymond has no soul. What's more important is this abnormally large number of monitors. As a professional Mr. Lonely, Hikigaya is extremely sensitive to his surroundings and detected dozens of hidden cameras in no time. I'm afraid I can't sneak into this school even at dusk. Hikigaya complained in his heart but didn't take it to heart. Anyway, he has always been alone, and it's probably the same in the future. No matter what purpose these hidden cameras are, it has nothing to do with him. Compared to the hidden camera. He is more interested in this place called Kiaki Mall Shopping Center, whether there is a hidden raiment shop or not. However, time is limited. Just by observation, it is impossible to find deliberately hidden shops. Following the admission guide, Hikigaya came to the teaching building. The school is divided into three grades. Each grade is divided into A, B, C, and D classes. According to the rules, New students need to go to the class first to put their school bags, wait for the class teacher to explain the rules, and then go to the gymnasium for the entrance ceremony. Although I care about the words of rules. But Hikigaya still didn't take it to heart. Anyway, no matter what rules, a person who doesn't fight or brawl will not be affected in the end. With a little anxiety and expectation about entering a strange environment, Hikigaya came to the classroom door with a sign of 1B. While I do miss comically a bit, I'm actually looking forward to the experience of living alone in high school. Maybe you can enjoy a beautiful youth like the protagonist in the comics. Class 1B As soon as I walked into the classroom, I felt an unusual atmosphere. Most people are gathered around a girl with long pink hair. The girl has long pink hair and waist-length hair. Her pretty face is full of cheerful smiles. She often sends topics to people around her and never misses any. The huge object in front of her chest is about to come out, as if the burgundy school uniform might collapse at any time. Under her slender waist is a pair of chubby long legs. Instantly took away Hikigaya's sight, he can hear Kiaki Mall is really amazing from time to time. However, what is even more surprising is that, although they have just started school, she has already become the center of the class. Although I want to join, I can't help but recall my junior high school days. Whenever he talks about anime with his otaku friends, everyone will conspicuously fall silent. Or wait until there are fewer people. After hesitating again and again, Hikigaya still decided to find his seat first. His position is in the middle of the first row near the corridor. A proper passerby position. However, as soon as he turned around, he met a girl's eyes. The girl tied her hair in twin ponytails, her appearance was pretty. Her figure was slender, and her peach blossom eyes seemed to be electrifying at any time. Speaking of which, the overall attractiveness of the students in this school is quite remarkable, everyone seems more beautiful than my junior high school classmates. And it seems that she is also a disc mate. The nameplate on the table says Himanoyuki. However, his expression was somewhat hesitant. This look, Hikigaya recognized. Observing humans is one of his 108 skills. When junior high school started, a girl exchanged contact information with him with the same look, and then he texted her every day with full expectation. Only found out afterwards. The other party just exchanged contact information to avoid embarrassment because they accidentally met their eyes. There are also rumors like Hikigaya texts me every day, disgusting, annoying to death. Although he appreciates the other's kindness, he doesn't need this sympathy. During the thinking, Hikigaya clenched his fists slightly, nodded imperceptibly, walked past her, and the other party was stunned and nodded slightly and no longer paid attention. Sure enough, a professional Mr. Lonely will not fall into the same pit for the second time. Hikigaya climbed on the table and was secretly proud. The dead fish eyes couldn't help but look at the red dot on the hidden camera on the corner. Even if you are in a crowd, there will be no embarrassment. In terms of wasting time, he is the world's number one, ha <laughs> ha. What kind of useless skill is it after all? Hikigaya couldn't help but turn his head sideways, looking at the wall with his back to the somewhat noisy laughter. What am I looking forward to? Disgusting. Chapter 2, Chapter 002, Unreliable Teacher The time left for students to communicate is not much. 
Before long, I heard Yakinose's voice the time is almost up, everyone, let's leave a good impression on the teacher. Everyone in class B responded and returned to their seats one after another. At this time, Hikigaya had a chance to observe the people around him. The person in front is a guy with sharp eyes, and his nameplate reads Kanzaki Ryuji. I glanced at him briefly and then averted my gaze. It's really too much. Behind him is a weak-looking girl with white ear-length hair named Shirenami Chihiro. She also didn't communicate with him. As soon as she accidentally met her eyes, she quickly turned away her face. Even more excessive. Although the experience of junior high school made him mentally prepared early, he couldn't help but feel a little sad. If it weren't for his strong heart, he would have been stupid long ago. In less than a while. Accompanied by the click footsteps, a woman wearing a pink t-shirt walked into the classroom. Although she looks very beautiful, Hikigai has no mood to pay attention to these at this moment. His youth has just ended. It is difficult to join a group after school starts. Well. Anyway, he didn't want to blend into these people either. Everyone, go back to their seats or else I will not be polite. The female teacher walked onto the podium with her hands on her hips pretending to be angry. Although she said she was not polite in her mouth, there was a hint of playfulness in her tone. She seemed to be a very talkative teacher. Hikigaya couldn't help but straighten his back either. After all, it's the first day of school. It's always right to leave a good impression on the teacher. It will be more convenient to ask for leave in the future. The female teacher picked up the chalk, nodded her head with one foot and raised the other slightly, and skillfully wrote down her name, Hoshina Miyachi. It's just that although the action is cute, how does it feel unreliable? Hoshina Miyachi is my name. Everyone must remember it well. If you forget it, the teacher will be sad. Ah. A voice filled with surprise echoed. It has been confirmed that this teacher is indeed unreliable. Don't worry, teacher, how could we forget such a beautiful teacher? What a good thing to say, what's this student's name? Teacher, my name is Shibata Su. Very good. I see such a cute student for the first time. But it's a bit wrong. It should be cute. I prefer others to say that I am cute. Oh, yes yes. Hey. Is it true or false? I can't believe we're talking about this. Hikigaya was speechless. Don't you want to tell the rules? Since there are rules. Just follow them, damn it. But he didn't dare to say anything. The straight back slowly bent down again. Since they like to chat, just chat. Anyway, just listen slowly. Hoshina Miyachi quickly hit it off with the Akinos and others and showed no signs of stopping at all. After a while. Finally, someone couldn't help it anymore. Teacher. Kanzaki Ryuji, who was sitting in front of him, stood up and said in a deep voice, The admission guide seems to write that the class teacher will be responsible for explaining the rules. Although the school is free of charge, the admission guide does not write about food and life. How will the school handle this part? Well done. Directly raise specific questions, giving this unreliable teacher no chance to diverge. Simply a hero. Hikigaya secretly made up his mind to call him Hiro Kanzaki from today. But he seemed to underestimate this teacher a bit. You can't do this, Kanzaki. Hoshina Miyachi put her hands on her hips and shook her jade fingers, impatience is a big taboo for popular men. If you want to have a girlfriend, you must be mature and stable. At least the teacher prefers mature and stable men. Do you understand? No. I don't understand. Who the hell wants to know your mate selection criteria? Hurry up and tell me the rules. Hikigaya and Kanzaki at the front desk twitched at the corners of their mouths at the same time, completely unaware of how to deal with such a teacher. Teacher Hoshina Miyu. At this time, Iakino stood up and smiled back. There is an entrance ceremony in an hour. If this continues, I'm afraid it won't be finished in a short time. If there is a chance, we can continue next time. How about it? Really, I really can't help you guys. Hoshina Miyuchi put her hands on her hips and looked a little helpless. It's not that I don't understand your anxious feelings. I just want to chat with everyone more. Since you want to know so much, I will tell you. It sounds like she is being bullied. Hikigaya was really speechless. Pass this down. At this time, Hoshina Miyuchi passed a box similar to a mobile phone from front to back. Hikigaya also received three of them, passed two to Shirenami behind him, saw her lower her head and passed one of them behind her before he breathed a sigh of relief. When passing textbooks in junior high school, the girl behind cried out in public saying Hikigaya touched it, I don't want it. 
At that time I really wanted to die. Fortunately, Shiran Army didn't say that, otherwise, he might have looked foolish. The school has a special rule called the S system. The student ID terminal just sent down is similar to a mobile phone, but it is only for internal communication in the school. The external network can only browse information. It also has a payment function similar to a credit card. The difference is that what is consumed is not money but points. There are now 100,000 points in it, each point equals 1 yen. In addition, points are credited into the account on the first day of each month. If you have points, you can buy everything. Hoshina Miyuchi's words were clear and concise. She raised her chin slightly with her hands on her hips and looked triumphant. Is that all? Someone murmured. This is too short. As a teacher, please provide a thorough explanation of the rules. Damn it. Feeling several gazes, Hikigaya realized that he was the one who spoke out and lowered his head awkwardly. Hikigaya right? Hoshina Mia shook her jade finger with one hand on her waist and said persuasively. You see, work is the enemy of women. Of course, if one can avoid working, they won't work. Compared with work, I prefer gossip and shopping. Hikigaya can come to me anytime. I am very welcome. Staying up late is really a woman's enemy. This woman proudly didn't want to work. If she can have the same dream as him, maybe she is a very good teacher. No way. Hikigaya chuckled twice and once again sighed at this unreliable teacher. Unreliable teachers and a class full of enemies, for now. What will my youth become? Chapter 3, Chapter 003 You guys are too good. Without waiting for Hakuman to feel too embarrassed anymore, several students from class B raised their hands. Your turn Tilda. Hoshina Mia didn't mind, pointing with her jade hand. Hanami-chan, do you have any questions? Teacher. Iakino stood up with some confusion. Isn't 100,000 points rather excessive? We're just normal students. It's hard to fathom the school's generosity. The pocket money of an ordinary high school student is less than 10,000 yen. Even if it includes three meals and daily necessities, it only needs 20 to 30,000 yen. 100,000 is really too much. There are 160 people in one grade and 480 people in the whole school. Very month is 48 million, nearly 600 million a year, and various facilities and operations of the Key Aki Mall shopping center. You know they are all students who haven't worked yet. Even if there is a country as a background, this is really too much. Also, I just said that there are 100,000 points in the student ID now. The points will be deposited on the first day of each month. Does it mean that 100,000 points will be deposited every month? I think so too. Another person agreed. Kanzaki at the front desk also nodded, looking at Hoshinomiya with some doubts. There are many smart people in the world, and soon someone found the problem. Of course. It cannot be ruled out that Yakinos and others are inherently excellent. In fact, only three people raised their hands, Iakinos, Kanzaki and Shibata who looked like a normie. Good question. Hoshina Miyuchi pointed with her jade hand and was triumphant. Since you asked sincerely, I'll kindly explain that how you choose to perceive it is entirely up to you. Are you kidding? Hikigaya muttered in his heart, daring to bet that Hoshina Miya sensei definitely does not have a boyfriend. Hearing her words, the people in class B breathed a sigh of relief together. No affirmative response was given, clearly, it carried a negative connotation. It implied that there wouldn't be 100,000 points every month. After all, there is no free lunch in the world. Everyone knows the basic truth. So, Hoshina Miya sensei what causes points to vary each month? Why does the school want to give us 100,000 points when we enter school? This point is really too much. Do they anticipate we'll face embarrassment in the future because of our points, leading to the prepayment of 100,000 points? And what does it mean that points can buy everything? Yeah, the concept of everything is really vague. It's hard to imagine that a school with a national background would have such an omission. Iakinos and Kanzaki and others asked several questions in a row, asking people around them to be dumbfounded. Hey hey hey! Is it true or false? Hikigaya was shocked. It's not easy to be a nationally renowned top high school. These people are too good. They even asked several questions he hadn't thought of. Originally, Hikigaya had been brimming with confidence in his insights, but in this moment, he couldn't afford to underestimate them. The key question is. Is it okay for me to stay here? Why do I feel a little unqualified? 
Why would this school admit people who handed in blank papers? It's outrageous. I want to go home. Hikigaya crawled on the table watching their performance. Stop stop stop. Hoshinomiya crossed her arms on her chest. Since you have so many questions, then I will answer them one by one. Looking at the teacher on the podium, Iakinos and others looked forward to it. Ping pong. Hoshinomiya blinked her beautiful eyes and sold Guanzi before saying, the answer is that everyone thinks about it themselves. All right, everything's been taken care of. The remaining time is yours. I will leave first. Remember to attend the entrance ceremony in an hour. As she said that. Before Iakinos and others reacted. Hoshinomiya slipped out of the classroom like a puff of smoke. She just walked halfway and hurriedly walked to the podium as if she remembered something. I almost forgot. There is another important rule I haven't told you. Different from the laughing posture just now, Hoshinomiya put her hands on the podium with a serious face. Because the school is a single dormitory, it is strictly forbidden to have improper relationships between men and women. But as long as no one finds out there is no problem. If you have someone you like, remember to tell me. I will cover for you. Class B fell into a long silence. They were left utterly speechless. Important rules. That's it? Why is everyone so silent? Hoshinomiya pouted with her hands on her hips, displaying a hint of annoyance. I'm sharing some exclusive information with all of you. When you hear these rules, you should be thrilled. So, let's go, come with me, hee hee. Hee hee. Hee hee. Hoshinomiya excitedly waved her fists. It seemed that if no one responded, she would keep waving like this. Out of helplessness. Shibatu and others exchanged glances and waved their fists in response. Really fake. Looking at the whole class waving their fists and cheering for the possibility of improper relationships between men and women. Hikigaya sighed with his hand on his forehead. What is this, a bunch of idiots? Suddenly he felt worried about the future. Well, since his dream is to be a house husband, it doesn't matter much. It just feels a bit awkward. He doesn't seem to fit this class. That's right, see you later, everyone. Only then did Hoshinomiya leave the classroom satisfied, leaving class B in silence for a while. After a while, someone finally sighed. What a great teacher. Indeed. Let's put these things aside for now. Kanzaki stood up expressionlessly and said, Indeed, there are reasons why teacher Hoshinomiya can't tell us. This should also be part of the so-called DES system rules. He adjusted really fast. Hira Kanzaki, you're so excellent that it makes me feel awkward. Hikigaya muttered silently in his heart. By the way, how long will this class meeting last? It should be okay to leave now, right? Kanzaki-kun, I think this can be put aside for later. Iakino stood up with one hand on his chest and a bright smile on his face. Although we have already met each other just now, many people still don't know each other's names. I suggest that everyone introduce themselves first, and then discuss the rules. What do you think? Although she said so, Iakinos's eyes were looking at Kanzaki, seeking his opinion. After all, Kanzaki originally brought the topic to the direction of the rules, but Iakinos prefers to deal with interpersonal relationships first. This is undoubtedly hitting Kanzaki in the face. No problem. Kanzaki also nodded wisely, your judgment is correct, I didn't take into account everyone's feelings. After all, people who don't know each other discussing this will undoubtedly make people feel embarrassed. This judgment is more correct and comprehensive. Then let me start first, how about it? For some reason. Hikigaya felt that Iakinos seemed to glance at him. This is obviously impossible. After all, they don't even know each other. Okay. My name is Iakinos Hanami. If you don't mind, you can call me Hanami. I like all kinds of sweets, especially red bean buns. I'm not very good at sports. Iakinosai's self-introduction was perfect, which made Hikigaya Hikiman recall his past. Once in junior high school when he plucked up the courage to introduce himself. Because of being too nervous and stuttering, it caused a burst of laughter. Some people even shouted directly let's go to the next one which made him feel embarrassed and want to die. In order to avoid repeating the same mistakes. While Iakinos held everyone's attention, Hikigaya slipped away unnoticed. Although it's not worth being proud of. Hikigaya exuded confidence in his ability to stay unnoticed. Even if he walks on the street, he won't attract anyone's attention. Maybe he has 8th grader disorder. This might be considered a superpower. Hikigaya was secretly a little proud. 
the corners of his mouth unconsciously raised slightly. He accidentally made eye contact with Shiren Army. Well, after all, it's a classroom position near the hallway, so being discovered is normal. But the other party's face turned red, and she quickly shifted her gaze to Iakino's, pretending not to see it. Himano Yuki on the side seemed to have noticed but didn't say much. Perhaps. This could be the other person's way of showing their distinctive kindness, merely pretending not to notice. Thinking about this. Hikigaya felt like crying a bit. Forget it. What's more important is. He still has a lot of questions to ask Hoshinomiya sensei. Although Ayaki knows and others asked a lot, they didn't seem to ask the key points. Chapter 4, Chapter 004, The Boy Who Makes Other People Angry. Hoshinomiya explained the rules very quickly. So that there was no one in sight in the teaching building. Soon. Hikigaya Hakuman found Hoshinomiya Chi's figure and ran to her side in small steps. Ara, Hikigaya Kun. Hoshinomiya Chi came to a halt, wearing a teasing smile, and quipped, What brings you to me? Have you fallen in love at first sight? In that case, I'll have to consider it. The final sentence is unnecessary. Hikigaya Hakuman was speechless. For some reason. Even if he gets too close to a girl, he will get nervous and sweat in his palms, but he is not embarrassed at all when facing women of other ages. Rather, perhaps because he has a sister, he is quite good at dealing with young girls. As for Hoshinomiya, it feels no different from a little girl. I have some questions to ask the teacher. Hikigaya said frankly. <laughs> Hoshinomiya frowned imperceptibly, but it was keenly noticed by Hikigaya. Why did she seem a little angry? Why didn't you ask in the classroom just now? Well. Hikigaya was a bit embarrassed. Anyway, there are many reasons. Like what? Hoshinomiya wouldn't let it go. Although school has just started, but obviously as a member of Class B, he ran out alone to ask questions. There's a genuine suspicion that Hikigaya doesn't see himself as part of Class B. Like what? Hikigaya's eyes turned quickly. Ah, because I want to ask some private questions. <laughs> Hoshinomiya showed a scrutinizing look, which made Hikigaya feel like he was seen through in an instant. What kind of school is this? The people in this school are really scary. In fact, Hoshinomiya is actually a teacher demon pretending to be cute. Ask. After a considerable pause, Hoshinomiya placed her hands on her hips and declared triumphantly, but whether I choose to respond or not is depends on my mood. Is it possible for students to request voluntary withdrawal from the school? Hikigaya asked seriously. Although I don't know how I was admitted, can't I voluntarily drop out? A school without komaki, no matter how luxurious it is, has no meaning at all. Moreover, just ten minutes ago, his youth had ended. Hoshinomiya was stunned for a moment. At advanced nurturing high school, admission is often seen as a ticket to a promising future. At least, that's what new students should believe. But after teaching for so many years, this is the first time she have encountered someone who wants to drop out as soon as school starts. Why? Hoshinomiya frowned obviously and asked. Well, anyway, there are many reasons. Hikigaya played dumb. This time, Hoshinomiya didn't ask any more questions. For someone who doesn't have ambition, staying in this school is also a waste. Yes, you can. Hoshinomiya said bluntly the school will notify parents that students cannot adapt to the school. No, I don't mean that. Hikigaya laughed awkwardly and explained, I mean can you not notify my parents or say that I can't keep up with my studies because of lack of ability and something like that? Incompetent. This way parents probably won't be able to say anything. As for considering his parents, don't joke. He believes that his stinky dad and others are celebrating that they finally sent him away. Stinky dad, will work hard for me. <laughs> Hoshinomiya blinked her beautiful eyes and finally understood his meaning. It's clear that he doesn't truly want to leave school. There's something beyond these school walls that tugs at his heartstrings, and he's searching for a suitable excuse to convince his parents. There is still hope. Although the school has some special features. But as the class leader of Class B, she still cares about every student. That's why she was able to remember the names of every student before entering school. Hoshinomiya Chi made up her mind that she would do her best to save this lost lamb. Yes, you can. Hoshinomiya nodded and smiled, if you are incompetent, you will be expelled sooner or later. But if you deliberately hide your strength and drop out of school, I will tell your parents truthfully. After all, this is the school's obligation. Damn it. 
Does this imply that I could have left school by pretending to be a stupid person, but now I've closed off that option for myself? If his stinky dad knew that he deliberately gave up such a good opportunity, he will definitely kick him out of the house. That won't work. He loves his parents deeply and sincerely hopes that his parents will live a long life. I wish that my parents could evolve from social animals into social beasts and continue to strive until the age of 100 to provide financial support for him. There's no way being thrown out of the house can be tolerated. Moreover, what kind of strength does he have to hide? Originally just aiming at being a house husband, an ordinary person who can't even make friends, at most can only be considered as a reserve member of the future army of social animal. Hikigai Hakuman still has this self-awareness. Even Iaki knows, Kanzaki, and Shibatu who are obviously much better than him, let alone other classes. I see, please don't do that. Hikigai bowed his head and admitted defeat. What kind of cute teacher is the person in front of me? She is simply a demon who can see through people's hearts. She saw through his disguise in an instant. But Hoshinomiya sensei, what does it mean that you will be expelled sooner or later? Is it common for this school to drop out? Hikigaya asked curiously. Sort of, any other questions? Hoshinomiya nodded without hiding anything. Even if this point is clear, I can't think of anything else. There really is no free lunch in the world. Hikigaya was speechless in his heart. If you are labeled as a dropout from advanced nurturing high school, you might be finished in your life. This school is simply a scam. Nonetheless, this is unrelated to his ambitions of pursuing a private university education and his dream of becoming a house husband. As long as I am lazy enough, no one can target me. And there's also the matter of liberal arts and science. Hikigaya said seriously. This school is about to break his life plan. This school does not have liberal arts. Before he finished speaking, Hoshinomiya interrupted, whether it's liberal arts or science, you have to study hard. Sure enough. Hikigaya sighed again at this garbage school. At first, he intended to drop science after junior high, study liberal arts, and use his father's money for a private university. After all, he really hates math. He just want to learn useful things. In the end, putting in effort doesn't always guarantee success. For most people, failure is the more common outcome. The simpler it seems, the trickier it can be. Now even science cannot be given up. I remember Hikigaya Khan handed in a blank paper during the entrance exam. Hoshinomiya pinched her chin and looked at the boy in front of her, is there any trouble? Ha ha. Hikigaya avoided her gaze awkwardly and laughed twice. If you know, please be considerate and don't let me enroll. Seriously. Forget it. Hoshinomiya put her hands on her hips triumphantly. If you have any troubles in your studies, you can find Hanami-chan. She is the top scorer in the entrance exam. Don't come to me. Normally, shouldn't it be leave everything to the teacher here to show your cute side? Hey hey. Is it really okay for a teacher who hates work so much? Hikigaya was speechless. However. On the other hand, Aoki knows is truly excellent. It seems that there are exceptionally many excellent people in this class. <laughs> Hoshinomiya narrowed her eyes and smiled does the teacher look like the kind of person who deliberately shows off to be cute? Yes. You are. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Hoshinomiya clenched her pink fist and shook it, not concealing her threatening meaning. It's confirmed. This boy is a little devil that makes people angry. No, I don't mean that. Hikigaya broke into a cold sweat and instinctively took a half step back, uttering, even when you do nothing, you're incredibly cute. Are you suggesting that I'm lazy? No no, I definitely didn't mean that. Forget it. Hoshinomiya patted his shoulder with a smile, indicating not to be nervous, is there anything else? Ha. Huh. Hikigaya breathed a sigh of relief. The teachers in this school are really scary. Is it possible to freely choose your career after graduation? Are there any specific conditions? Looking at Hikigaya's dead fish eyes in front of him, Hoshinomiya had an illusion that he had seen through everything. It seemed that he didn't care about the answer at all. Actually, it is. The important things are only dropping out of school and liberal arts and sciences. Everything else is just not important. Tuition-free, free choice of career. There can't be such wonderful things in the world, and even if they exist, they won't come his way. Hikigaya is really sharp. Hoshinomiya said with a bit of admiration. Ha ha ha. Hikigai laughed twice, most people know there's no free lunch. Is there a catch? How could there be such a thing? Hikigai Khan's paranoia is too serious. 
Hoshinomiya tapped his head with a book bag and frowned, saying, Yes, you have the freedom to choose your career, but there are certain conditions in place. What conditions? Fufu. Hoshinomiya folded her arms delicately across her chest and declared, No information beyond this point. Can't you say? Hikigaya was somewhat speechless. This school is probably afraid of some major thing, leaving students guessing about everything. However, it's pretty easy to guess. Choosing your career freely is subject to certain conditions. You must pass the school's test to unlock that opportunity. But, if it's a school test for students, there's no need to conceal it, it's perfectly fine to be straightforward and truthful. After all, students don't have the power to resist either. The remaining answer is only one. Competition between students. It's just a simple elimination method. I believe that excellent people like Hiyaki knows have already discovered it long ago. Competition between students. Hikigaya lowered his head and murmured in thought, and those who have the power to choose their careers freely are only a few. The condition is. Academic performance, sports performance, special student, or comprehensive evaluation? Or maybe it's a loners, after all. Loners are the fewest group of people. Doesn't that mean he already has the opportunity to choose his career freely? That's just great. Hikigaya thought happily. On the other side, Hoshinomiya's eyes narrowed a bit, and for the first time, she gazed directly at the boy in front of her. She has been a class teacher for so many years and has seen countless smart students. But their thinking basically stops at the school's test for students. In the end, whether it's elementary school or junior high school, the institution holds absolute authority. Overcoming this ingrained concept is a challenge for most people. Only next month, they were aware that it was a competition among students. And the man in front of him thought about this step with just a few questions. It was too scary. Originally she thought that class B had an excellent talent like Yaki knows. I've already picked up treasure. I didn't expect that there would be such talents. He just seemed a bit introverted and not good at communicating with people. However, she didn't know yet. Hikigai Hakuman's thinking has not ended yet. Chapter 5, Chapter 005, Did You Do It On Purpose Or Accidentally? Seeing Hikigai thinking to this point, Hoshinomiya, who originally wanted to be lazy, also became serious. Hoshinomiya sensei. Hikigai found himself somewhat perplexed as he pondered, how many individuals had the chance to select their careers freely last year. Given that Hoshinomiya sensei cannot provide an answer, let's approach the situation from a different perspective. As long as you know the situation last year, you can roughly guess what conditions are needed for free choice of career. <laughs> Hoshinomiya casually changed the topic and asked, So, why did Hikigaya can talk to me? Was it because he's really into the teacher? Ha ha ha. Hikigaya laughed twice. For a while. I couldn't tell whether it was due to the restriction of rules that she couldn't answer, or this unreliable teacher was deliberately playing tricks. Forget it, since you can't provide an answer. Hoshinomiya's expression soured, and she let out a frustrated sigh. Well, I can answer that. Only the students in class A have the privilege of choosing their careers without constraints. There is no surprise either. After all, this is also one of his expected possibilities. Only class A has the opportunity to choose a career freely, and there must be corresponding promotion channels. In that case, there must be multiple ways to advance to class A. Hikigaya didn't care much. As I can't afford to leave school, I'm determined to secure this privilege. In any case, I currently belong to class B, which includes exceptional individuals like Hiyakino's Hanami and Kanzaki. It's only a matter of time before we ascend to class A. Just hug Hiyakino's thigh faithfully. That's really a cunning way of asking questions. Hoshinomiya pouted her mouth. He didn't inquire about the path to class A, he instead directly questioned the number of available ways to move up to class A. Cunning or something, the teacher is really too much. Hikigaya stated with a serious tone, I'm simply seeking the most efficient solution. Even the police opt for the most efficient approach. It can be considered the right choice. Furthermore, since Hoshinomiya sensei may not be able to answer, I intentionally used this method of questioning. You are also welcome to respond as you see fit. In essence, I used this way of asking question for your benefit. It's not that he's being clever. <laughs> Hoshinomiya Chi was slightly stunned. I've just found out that this boy tends to be quite confrontational, which can be rather infuriating. He deserve a beating. You must listen to the teacher's words. 
Hoshinomiya knocked on his head lightly with a book bag and then raised her white chin triumphantly. There are two ways to upgrade to class A. I can't disclose the first one at the moment. The second one only needs to collect 20 million Prithilda points and you can get the right to transfer classes. I see, teacher Hoshinomiya, what did you just say dot dot Prithilda? What points? What does it mean? I didn't say anything. You obviously said it. I said nothing. Hoshinomiya put her hands on her hips and leaned forward slightly with her beautiful eyes staring at Hikigaya Hakuman. Ah. Hikigaya doesn't think he is a person without emotional intelligence. Obviously Hoshinomiya said some taboo and accidentally slipped her mouth. Pritilda. Point. Words beginning with pre quite limited, which likely corresponds to private. As for the other ones, it must involve the class. Only class A can be promoted. Clearly, there are two points categories, class points and private points. Aikino's and her group's hypothesis implies that monthly private point may fluctuate and are probably impacted by class points. However, the exact proportion is not clear yet. Well, Hukuman concedes, is it intentional, or is it just an accident on your part, Sensei? It's difficult to imagine that an outstanding teacher from a prestigious school like ANHS would make such a mistake by accident. Hoshinomiya's gaze sharpens as she raises her book like she's about to strike. I'm sorry. Hakuman leans back, quickly surrendering. But, Sensei, 100,000 points per month, which is 3,6 million in three years, and 20 million private points. No matter how you look at it, it's impossible. Are there other ways to gain points? Has anyone ever collected 20 million before? Why do you have so many questions? Hoshinomiya responds, squinting her eyes. Isn't it common sense to ask the teacher if you have any questions? Hikigayas said moreover, isn't it the teacher's responsibility to provide answers for students? Don't ask any more questions, I'm getting angry. Hoshinomiya's eyes were wide open, her pink pupils shining like gems, which made her look somewhat adorable. The boy in front of her had an astonishing insight, which was too sharp. 20 million private points. It was just a habit, and she accidentally let it slip just now. It's only the first day of school. If he continues to ask, she might break the rules. However, it will only reduce her annual bonus. I see. Hoshinomiya seemed to be really angry, and Hikagaya Hakuman immediately prepared to leave. The entrance ceremony is about to start. I'll go first. After saying that, Hikagaya Hakuman quickly turned around and left. It turns out that when the teacher gets angry, it's so scary. Stop, come back to me. At this moment, Hoshinomiya said. She felt that she had already understood how to handle this student. Yes. Hikigaya Hakuman succumbed again, returned to Hoshinomiya's front and squeezed out a smile reluctantly, Hoshinomiya sensei, is there anything else? HMPH, do you really believe I will just let you walk away like this? As she said that, Hoshinomiya raised her book as if to hit him. Hikigaya Hakuman quickly closed his eyes and shrank his head to prepare for the beating. Let her hit him once to vent her anger. After all, she looks like she's in her twenties and is almost menopause. It's normal for her temper to be big. Hikigaya Hakuman contemplated it. Then he heard a soft whisper in his ear, exhaling like orchids. I don't hate such cunning boys. Hikigaya Hakuman snapped his eyes open. Nearby, Hoshinomiyachi playfully moved her hands behind her back and stepped back. See you later, Hikigaya kun Hoshinomiya put her bare hands behind her back and retreated step by step until she turned round and left in a daze. Looking at her back, Hikigaya Hakuman's face turned a little red. As a man with many dark histories and never having a girlfriend, the scene just now was too stimulating. If he were still his junior high school self, he would undoubtedly confess immediately, only to face rejection. He would actually be dumped. 80% of the men in the world have the stupid idea of does she like me. As a veteran loner, he naturally couldn't fall into the same pit twice. But. How should I put it? He still struggles with handling this teacher. Chapter 6, Chapter 006, This school is very dangerous. Go back to the white room. Jim Hall no one. When Hikigai Hakuman arrived, the students were already gathered. He quickly found the line for class B and stood at the back, leaving about three spaces between him and the people in front. It looked like he was part of a group, yet uncertain, in a kind of ambiguous distance. After all, the conversation with Hoshinomiya sensei had left him with no intention of socializing with class B. One way or another, 
the likes of Iakinos and the others, with their outstanding abilities, had probably already figured it out. Even if they hadn't, they would sooner or later. And also, in the end, they were in class B right from the start, along with all those outstanding students. It was a perfect start. All he had to do was grab onto Iakinos's thigh and wait to be promoted to class A, while working towards his goal of accumulating 20 million personal points. Well, the school's management is pretty lax, isn't it? Listening to the long-winded speech by the principal, Hikigaya's mind wandered as he looked around, lost in thought. Both Class A and Class B had formed neat cues. On the other hand, in Class C and Class D. Despite the principal giving a speech on stage, the students below continued to be noisy, and no one stopped them. Since he had nothing better to do, he decided to just look around. This was one of his 108 skills, time acceleration, which allowed him to unknowingly pass the time during boring moments. One had to admit that the school had an exceptionally high level of attractiveness. If this had been junior high, he might have set a new record for the number of times he had been dumped. The opening ceremony quickly came to an end under the effect of time acceleration. Hikigaya had come and and left. It wasn't that he didn't want to socialize with Class B. He just didn't want to deal with those little cliques, especially after seeing him in Oyuki's hesitant expression. Quite a few people seemed to have similar ideas to him, and Hikigaya Hakuman joined the flow of people, looking at the man with dead fish eyes in front of him. Wow, his movements were even faster than him. It seemed that he, too, was a seasoned loner who had mastered the art of being inconspicuous. However, just like stand users attract other stand users, loners also attract other loners. He can't Hikigaya's perceptive gaze. Stare. Hikigaya Hakuman stared at the man with dead fish eyes in front of him. There was no particular reason, he was just feeling bored. The man with dead fish eyes in front of him had one strand, two strands, three strands, four strands of soft and shiny hair. Clearly, he had just washed his hair yesterday, and he was probably a young man with a healthy lifestyle. Just like him. A seasoned loner, an ultimate loner and has evolved. What a pointless observation. Suddenly. The man with dead fish eyes in front of him turned round, and a pair of unremarkable dead fish eyes made Hikigaya feel like he was looking in a mirror. Two pairs of dead fish eyes locked onto each other. Aianokuji Kiyotaka looked a little confused or alert. As a member of the White Room, he had grown up under surveillance and was extremely sensitive to eye contact. From a little while ago, this man had been staring at him, not concealing it at all, and it made him uneasy. If he were in the same class, Ayano Kuji would have assumed he wanted to start a conversation with him. However, in the first minute of school, he had already memorized the names and appearances of all his classmates, and he was very sure that this man was not one of them. Yet, he continued to stare at the back of his head. Maybe he had already blown his cover on the first day, or maybe there was something about him that was different from ordinary people. Ayano Kuji Kiyotaka was on high alert. However, Having grown up in a closed environment for his entire life. Although he possesses abundant theoretical knowledge, he lacks practical social experience. In fact, his concept of ordinary people came from books, so could this be what they called a stalker in books? That shouldn't be. He was a man, after all. Although he had heard that there were men with special fetishes. It had only been the first day of school, not even two hours had passed. And he had already encountered one? and he was already targeted? Was the outside world really this terrifying? Unconsciously, Aino Kujiki Ataka felt the hint of fear that he had not felt in a long time. Originally, as the masterpiece of the White Room, he had already lost all emotions, but for some reason, he didn't know why. At this moment, Aino Kujiki gets goosebumps. This is a fear instinct. Although he had the intention to test him, Aino Kujiki didn't know how to speak first. The best way was for the other party to speak first, and then use past knowledge to test the other party. On the other hand, Hikigaya Hakuman was also somewhat dumbfounded. This person must be crazy, staring at him as soon as he turned his head. It couldn't be that there was some strange smell on him. That shouldn't be. During his junior high school days, he received complaints from classmates about his persistent body odor. He was diligent about personal hygiene and took thorough showers almost every day. Today. He didn't come across any women who made him anxious. He wasn't so tense that he would break into a sweat, and there was no reason for any peculiar odors. Moreover, even if there is, you can say it directly. 
What does it mean to keep staring? A lunatic? As the people around him gradually departed, the two pairs of dead fish eyes looked at each other, and neither had their will to break the silence. In the end, Hikigaya couldn't bear it and nodded slightly. Aiyanokuji couldn't help but nod along. Then he watched Hikigaya directly lift his foot and pass by him. The two seemed to be exchanging secret signals. Question mark. Watching his back, Aiyanokuji Kiyotaka was full of question marks. What does this mean? Although he has read all kinds of books, but the books didn't teach this. On the other hand, a lunatic. Hikigaya came to the convenience store speechlessly. Those he had met in the past typically responded with indifference or a few reprimanding words. What could it be if he wasn't a lunatic? Walking into the convenience store, various daily necessities were placed in the most conspicuous position in front of him. It says free on it. Having already understood the importance of points, Hikigaya instantly understood that this was probably insurance prepared for people who lost their personal points. But, the quality is not bad, although he has not seen it on the market. But they are all well-known brands, most of these companies are still in the testing phase of products. After all, running such a large school, the annual expenditure must be a lot. It must have some deal with major financial groups. The students here must be a guinea pigs for experiments. Hikigaya doesn't mind it though. After all, it has already entered the launch phase. The products of big companies basically won't have problems. And he doesn't have much demand for material life. At worst. If these products really have hidden dangers, you don't have to worry about the second half of your life. You will definitely be able to get a big sum of money. And also, as long as you save 20 million personal points, you can have the freedom to choose your career. Hikigaya put various living materials into the shopping basket. Just at this moment, a slender and white hand like snow held onto the other end of the shampoo bottle. Chapter 7, Chapter 007, The Iceberg Girl Hikigaya looked up. What caught his eye was a girl with long black hair, a stunningly beautiful face, and skin as delicate as a baby's. However, her purple-red eyes gave off a slight chill. This bottle of shampoo was touched by me first. You were about 0.5 seconds slower than me, so this bottle of shampoo should belong to me. The girl's face was cold, her tone indifferent, as if she wasn't arguing but stating an objective fact. Oh, I see. I apologize. Hikigaya inadvertently apologized and quickly let go of his right hand to grab another bottle. What's going on? This is too scary. It felt like he was about to freeze in that instant. And there are so many others around. Is it necessary? However, the fact that she didn't mind him touching the things made him feel touched. If it were his junior high self, he would probably be moved to tears. Perhaps she is a good person after all. Hikigaya didn't think too much about it and continued to grab a few towels and toothbrushes before turning to leave. Wait. The girl suddenly spoke up. Um, is there something wrong? Hikigaya turned back with some doubt. He didn't think he had picked up anything strange. He glanced at the shopping basket somewhat unconfidently. I noticed that you only chose free living supplies and daily necessities. The girl walked up to him with her shopping basket, stopping at a distance of one step. Her beautiful eyes seemed to be scrutinizing something. Why? Ah. If you ask why, it's because I want to save some points. Hikigaya swallowed nervously. This person is really something. Her tone is as cold as ice, just like those women who despised him in the past. It's terrifying. Save points? The girl seemed puzzled, looking at the things you chose, you should be a freshman like me. The school gives each person 100,000 points, which is more than enough to use. There should be no need to save. But you picked all the free stuff. Hikigaya was somewhat speechless. How could she have the nerve to criticize him? I am me, you are you. We can't be compared. The girl looked up and down at the man in front of her and said indifferently, You seem like the type who is content with the status quo, has no ambition, and spends money lavishly. Why would you want to save points now? Hikigaya twitched at the corner of his mouth. This person is really too much. He takes back what he said about her being a good person earlier. She actually made such a blatant evaluation of someone she just met. Her personality is simply abhorrent to the extreme. But. Everything she said was true. Although he doesn't have much demand for material life, if it weren't for saving 20 million personal points, he would indeed be a spendthrift who spends money like water every month. Are all the people in this school so outstanding? 
she saw through his nature at a glance. As for why he wants to save points. It's not that he can't tell her, strictly speaking, the classes in this school are in competition with each other. Speaking of which, who is this person anyway? He doesn't even recognize all the people in his class, let alone the person in front of him. By the way, who are you? Hikiga plucked up his courage and asked in an unfriendly tone, hoping that she would take the hint and back off. He doesn't owe her an answer anyway. First year class D, Horikita Sazun. R, oh, I'm from first year class B, Hikigaya Hakuman. I didn't ask for your name. What about the answer just now? Horikita Sazun said indifferently. This person is really too much. It's basic etiquette to exchange names when introducing oneself. I'm sorry, but since you're from class D, I can't tell you. Hikigaya was somewhat speechless and turned around to leave after saying that. Speaking of which, since she kept a social distance of one meter from him, it made him feel more at ease. He should thank her for that. Or is it just that she doesn't want to get close to him? Then maybe he shouldn't thank her after all. Wait. Horikita Suzun suddenly stepped forward and grabbed his wrist. A. Hikigaya turned around abruptly, his face flushed red as he let out a strange sound from his mouth. Such innocent actions can lead men on and ultimately put them in danger. If you understand that, then from now on make sure not to have any physical contact with boys after class, don't sit on boys' desks, and don't borrow things from boys if you forget something. Do you understand? Is there anything else? Hikigaya asked somewhat helplessly. Speaking of which, this person is really strong. It feels like she's even stronger than him. Is she really a girl? Or is it that everyone in this school is really that outstanding? Whether it's Yaki Nose, Kanzaki, Shibata, or the Horikita Suzune in front of him, they're all so outstanding that he feels a bit inferior. Even if he tries his best, he believes that dropping out is only a matter of time. Competing with these people is simply impossible. Because I'm from class D, so you can't tell me? Horikita Suzune's small white hand tightened again as if she had grasped the key point. She said solemnly, What does that mean? Please explain it clearly. This is outrageous, this person definitely has no friends. Take it literally, how you want to think about it is up to you. Hikigaya mimicked the tone of Hoshina Miura, with no intention of indulging her. Can you let go now, please? I see, very well, I understand. What? Is she going to hit me? Hikigaya swallowed nervously. This is too scary. What do I have to do for you to tell me? Horikita Suzun let go of her hand and asked with a burning gaze. Hikigaya looked at the girl in front of him somewhat helplessly. It seemed that she really wanted to know. Strictly speaking, this isn't really any great information, and it will probably be known throughout the school in a while. But after all, classes are in competition with each other. It feels a bit wrong to collude with the enemy. You should ask your class teacher. Hikigaya gestured with his hand and turned to leave. This was already his limit. Speaking of which, why does she have to ask him? Can't she just ask the upperclassmen directly? Even if there are some rules restricting it, she can ask the teacher. Isn't it basic common sense to ask the teacher if you have a problem? It's just that he doesn't know what most people would even think to ask. Horikita Suzun pursed her lips unwillingly. If she knew what to ask, she would have asked a long time ago. I see, how about 20,000 points? Tell me everything you know. Upon hearing this, Hikigaya stopped in his tracks. He had some speculation about the class points. Looking at Class D's performance at the entrance ceremony just now, they were no match for Class B at all. The information isn't that important either. Trading information for some personal points doesn't seem like a problem. Speaking of which, he just realized that information can be sold for money. It's just that it's a bit impossible for him to negotiate with people. Just thinking about it makes him feel awkward. But isn't 20,000 a bit too little? Since there are buyers, selling more should be fine too. 25,000. Hikigaya immediately turned back and said, 25,000 and I'll tell you. Deal. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I misspoke just now. It's 30,000. Deal. Wait a minute. 30,000 is my limit. An information that just started school can't possibly have more value than this. Oh, is that so? Hikigaya said somewhat awkwardly. What she said makes sense. His information, if not recognized by the class, indeed doesn't have much value. But people's laziness and habits can't be changed in a day. 
with Class D's performance just now, it feels like it would be a waste of time for Horikita Suzun to know about it. Do we talk about it here? Hikigaya looked around. There were still quite a few people in the convenience store, who would let these guys earn money for nothing. The information comes from you, where do you think it would be appropriate to talk? Horikita Suzun crossed her arms and didn't seem to mind much. Let's find a place where there are no people. Hikigaya said indifferently, I have something else to do. Can you wait for me for a while? No problem. Horikita Suzun had no objections, but she had some doubts in her heart. Could such a man who talks nonsense and loves small gains really know any effective information? But, whether the information is worth 30,000 depends entirely on her judgment. The man in front of her seems quite easy to bully. Chapter 8, Chapter 008, Are You Worthy? Inside the Kiaki Mall shopping center, Hikigaya's dead fish eyes occasionally drifted back. A beautiful girl with a good figure was following him with a shopping basket, feeling like she would be shot through by the laser eyes of the people around her at any time. The one following him was Horikita Suzun. From his observation today, Horikita Suzun's beauty is enough to rank in the top few in the school. Hey, hey, this is some kind of youth love comedy unfolding. Just kidding. Seeking meaning from accidental phenomena or objective facts is a bad habit of unpopular men. She is just for information. Hikigaya came to the vending machine. He now urgently needs a can of high sugar max coffee to make up for that injured heart. The drinks in the vending machine are dazzling, but after looking for a long time, he couldn't find that yellow can with a great sense of design. Hikigaya searched several times in disbelief. Hey, hey, is this real? There's none? Why is there none? Hikigaya was somewhat dumbfounded and even incredulous. There's actually no Max Coffee. Although Max Coffee has not yet covered all of Japan, this is Tokyo right next to Chiba. There's actually none. A school without Max Coffee can only be described as garbage. What kind of school is this? It dares to call itself a top school in the country without Max Coffee. There should be a limit to shamelessness. Hikigaya was upset. Although he can make a similar drink himself, thinking about not having authentic Max coffee for three years. It cannot be allowed. This should never happen. Also, this school should go bankrupt and close. What's wrong? Horikita Suzun was somewhat puzzled. The man in front of her looked like an invertebrate who had suddenly been hit in the spine. It's nothing, let's go. Hikigaya shook his head, and Horikita Suzun didn't mind either. Dormitory building. The two quickly found a place where there were no people downstairs. This is all I know. Hikigaya reluctantly bought a bottle of coffee milk and started drinking it on his own. Because he was thinking about how to get back quickly and let the school add Max coffee, he spoke very quickly, but fortunately, Horikita Suzun in front of him was an excellent student. I see. Only Class A has the privilege to freely choose their careers and universities based on their class and personal points. Your speculation makes sense. As far as I can see, this is undoubtedly the truth. Horikita Suzun stood in front of him, her heart changed somewhat. The man in front of her. Just by a few words, he could speculate to such an extent, although he couldn't compare with her, he was also excellent enough. After all, being able to get information from others is also her strength. At least that's what Horikita Suzun thinks. How about it? Hikigaya urged. If it weren't for these 30,000 points, he would have wanted to go back and write a proposal to denounce this garbage school. Um, your information is worth enough. Horikita Suzun didn't break her promise either. The two took out their student IDs and fiddled with them for a while before they figured out how to transfer money. Student ID. Horikita Suzun stretched out her white hand. Hikigaya handed over his phone half a beat later. Neither of them thought there was anything wrong with it, after all. There was nothing unsightly in his student ID anyway. The money has arrived. I also left you my contact information. Horikita Suzun put the student ID in his hand and said, You can tell me if you have any information in the future. I will give you a reasonable price. No, don't contact me if there's nothing wrong. Do you understand? Hey hey. How self-important does this person think she is? She must think that because she looks pretty, she can do whatever she wants and all men in the world will like her? I understand. Hikigaya looked at the 130,000 points on his student ID and nodded. Horikita Suzun then turned around and left without hesitation. Until her figure disappeared, Hikigaya opened the contact list. Unexpectedly. 
My first contact turned out to be someone from another class, and such a beautiful woman at that. If it were in the past, I would have been so happy that I would have rolled around on the bed. Without any hesitation. Ikigaya clicked on Horikita Sazoon, then clicked on the top right corner. Delete. Who would want to contact you, such an arrogant woman? Goodbye to you. Do you think you're worthy of being in my contacts? 501. Back to the dormitory. What came into view was a single room. A neat single bed was placed in the corner, a low table in the center, and then a desk, bathroom, kitchen and everything else. Ikigaya sat down at the desk without a care and took out a pen and paper. He wrote a complaint letter, criticizing this garbage school. He couldn't stand a day without Max coffee. Until nightfall. Ikigaya looked at the long text in front of him and nodded in satisfaction. Tomorrow he would go and scold the school. At night. After washing up. Komaki, what if you don't eat properly? Ikigaya Hakuman took a sip of instant noodles with tears streaming down his face, wondering if Komaki could take care of herself without him. Damn old man, forcing me to come to this school. As a punishment for my father. He secretly made up his mind to continue his studies after graduating from university, stay at home until he was 30, and then go out to work. Dad, you must keep working. With thoughts of Komaki and worries, Hikigaya Hakuman fell asleep deeply. Starting today. He was going to start living alone for three years. The next morning. It wasn't until close to school time that Hikigaya woke up leisurely. After a simple wash-up, he left the room with the free toast he got yesterday, planning to eat it on the way. Feeling the occasional breeze on the balcony, Ikigaya couldn't help but look sideways. After all, it was almost time and there were hardly any students on the road. It's not that he deliberately chose this time. Just without anyone to restrain him, he naturally relaxed a bit. Walking into the elevator, Ikigaya pressed the first floor button, leaned against the corner, opened a pack of toast and started eating. It didn't matter at this time anyway since there was no one around. However, the elevator soon stopped at the fourth floor. He was slightly panicked and wanted to put the bread back into his bag. After all, eating in an elevator is not exactly a moral thing to do. As the elevator door opened, a figure appeared before his eyes. Hikigai Hakuman was stunned for a moment. It turned out to be that man with dead fish eyes from yesterday again. The key problem is. He kept staring at him again. Looking at the man in front of her holding toast, Aiyano Kujiki Atako hesitated for a moment. It stands to reason that the two of them knew each other. But just nodding their heads, Aiyano Kujiki Atako didn't know how to handle it. The most important thing is. The other party is suspected of being a stalker and gay. There are crumbs around his mouth, indicating he might have been eating in the elevator. It's rather awkward. Should I wait until later? The two pairs of dead fish eyes stared at each other for a moment without saying anything. Ikigaya finally understood what he meant and handed over a piece of toast. You've been staring at me for so long just for my bread? It's free anyway. I'll give it to you. Can you stop looking? <clears throat> Aino Kujiki Ataka fell into thought for a moment before saying, No need, thank you. It's almost late now. Standing like this is not very good either. It will inevitably leave a bad impression on people in class. Weighing the pros and cons. Aino Kujiki Ataka walked into the elevator and stood next to Hikigaya. Although it's not very good, but standing in front feels like some inexplicable danger will happen. After all, he offered bread obviously wanting to make good relations. He is probably testing my bottom line. This man is really too dangerous. On the other hand, Hikigaya also fell into silence. If it's not for bread then why are you staring at me? Spare me please. Elevator God can you please hurry up? What should I do if there's a lunatic living downstairs? Please, hurry up. What will my life become? Hikigaya felt that his future was difficult. Chapter 9, Chapter 009, The Malicious Shiran Army Chihiro Class 1B When Hikigaya Hakuman arrived at the classroom, a group of people from Class B were chatting around Iakinos. It seemed like they glanced at him. Don't worry. I understand. Hikigaya glanced away and returned to his seat, put on his headphones, and lay down on the desk, his movements flowing like water. Once a small group is formed, it's hard to let others join. The attitude of that Yuki from yesterday made it clear that they didn't welcome him. Don't worry. Hakuman is a man who won't cause trouble for others. Sure enough. No one bothered him anymore. 
Various laughter and chatter sounded again from Iakinos's side. Hikigaya only opened a small gap to secretly observe. Iakinos was indeed excellent. In just one day, she had become the center of the class. The most incredible thing was. She even successfully crossed the gender barrier, with both boys and girls gathered around Iakinos. With someone like her, it should be a matter of time before she gets promoted to class A. How lucky. Hikigaya secretly rejoiced, glad that he was assigned to class B. With someone like Iakinos, he could take his time to accumulate two million points, or even not accumulate at all. But he still had to accumulate them. From childhood to adulthood. No matter when or where, he was always alone. No matter what happened, he overcame it alone. When everyone else was talking and comforting each other, he faced everything alone. This is what a true strong person is. Hikigaya's mouth curled up slightly, and his gaze shifted to the other side. If Iakinos is the center of the girls, then the center of the boys is Shibata. Even a few girls are gathered around him. At first glance, he's a damn normie. I don't want to look anymore. Compared to these, it's more important to think about how to get the school to add Max coffee. As the bell rang for class, a middle-aged teacher walked into the classroom and the students returned to their seats one by one. I have to say, class B is indeed excellent. Even though the teacher seemed very lenient, almost everyone was in a serious listening posture, with only a few occasionally dozing off. He was much better than him. Of course, it's not that he was slacking off either. There's no division between arts and sciences. He naturally listened carefully in science class because he couldn't give up on science. He only studied useful things. But as for liberal arts subjects like Japanese. To be honest. He was quite confident in liberal arts. As long as you pile on gorgeous rhetoric and write all kinds of grandiose praises and commendations, you can always get high scores. I really don't want to listen. During English class. Hikigaya only felt sleepy listening, this is not as good as self-study, his eyelids started to fight, and finally fell asleep. In his sleep. He felt someone poking his spine behind his back, the key is that they kept poking and poking, it was really too annoying. Hikigaya opened his blurry eyes to find that there really was someone poking his spine. Looking back, a short-haired girl in white was poking his back with a neutral pen. Feeling his gaze, the other party quickly lowered her head and looked at the ground with a blush on her face. Remember it's Shira Nami or something. The nameplate has been removed. He didn't remember the name of the person in front of him. Remember it's called Shira Nami. It's Shira Nami. Hikigaya looked resentful, Shiranami blushed and looked up at him for a moment, then quickly lowered her gaze to the aisle. He then followed Shiranami's gaze and saw a piece of eraser quietly lying in the middle of the aisle. What, so the eraser fell? Great. I almost wanted to die being bullied by such a shy person. But. He also has a history of defeat. When he was in elementary school, he kindly picked up an eraser for someone. The girl behind him kept wiping it with a tissue and finally cried and said forget it, don't want it anymore. Hikigaya forgot how he got through that time. Now he can't possibly have such a strong heart. If Shira Nami said that to him, he might really want to die. So. He turned to glance at his desk mate, who went by the name Haim something Yuki. Did he remember it correctly, Yuki? Feeling the gaze. Himano Yuki stole a glance at him, noticed Hikigaya's subtle nod downward followed his gaze, and then shifted her attention back to the blackboard. Are you kidding me? Is it real or fake? Just pretend you didn't see it? Hikigaya was simply stunned. What kind of scum is this? Could it be a demon who likes to steal candy from children? Even picking up an eraser has to hesitate. Oh. It turns out it's me. That's fine then. Out of helplessness. Hikigaya bent over and picked up the eraser and put it on her desk. Fortunately, Shiranami took the eraser with both hands and put it on her chest. Her blushing face nodded slightly. Great. If she took out a tissue, he might really want to cry. However. Shiranami, don't you drop your eraser too often? Hikigaya was expressionless. In one English class, she dropped her eraser more than ten times. He was always picking up erasers for Shiranami. This is too much. This is definitely intentional. Could this be some new form of bullying? On just the second day of school, he was bullied. This is too miserable. I want to die. Finally made it to break time, Hikigaya immediately crawled on the table and closed his eyes. If Shiranami kept poking his spine like this, he would become crazy. 
The most important thing is that without Max Coffee, he really wants to die soon. Hikigaya-kun, are you still awake? A full of energy whisper sounded in his ear. Hikigaya lay on the table with a tense expression. It seems to be Akinose's voice. She was standing next to Shira Nami all morning. Is it bullying? Is it really bullying? It must be bullying, right? Shiren Army called her companions over and wanted to bully him in the most terrifying way. Shiren Army oh Shiren Army. I didn't expect you to be so malicious at such a young age. I really misjudged you. On the first day of school, I offended the center group of the class. It's over. Hikigaya closed his eyes pretending not to hear. If she asks him to go to the bathroom, what should he do? He can only beg for forgiveness in this way and escape for a while first. Hikigaya kun. However, the other party did not intend to let go. Hikigaya felt someone gently shaking his shoulder. Sigh, being bullied by the center group is inevitable after all. Damn it. Then don't blame him for being rude. He is a man dealing with two girls should not be a problem. Moreover, in this regard, he has experience, he was also bullied in junior high school. In this situation, you have to strike first. He rose to his feet and revealing his fangs with a bold move. This is the only way to prevent him from being bullied. Thinking about it. Hikigaya hardened his heart and got up in an instant. Chapter 10, Chapter 010, Have I Suddenly Become Popular? A stunningly beautiful face appeared before my eyes. The radiant smile on her face was like a spring breeze, as if this smile could nourish one's soul and was worth dying to protect. The person in front of me was Iaki knows Honami, the center of the class. Shira Nami, Himeno Yuki. Hira Kanzaki, and the popular Shibata were also gathered around her, followed by a group of unfamiliar girls. As expected the Akinos, she had such a strong appeal on the first day. What's wrong? Hikigaya asked somewhat dazedly. I noticed that Hikigaya-kun seemed to be dozing off in class. Are you okay? The Akinos asked with some concern. No problem, I just didn't sleep well last night. Hikigaya rubbed his sleepy eyes and said. What? So it's not about bullying me. That's great. Hikigaya-kun is like the two. Shibata laughed. I was also excited about living alone for the first time yesterday. I didn't expect to have such a luxurious single room. It's great to be able to study at this school. Yeah. Kshibai said excitedly, and the food at the Pallid Cafe is also delicious. Having so much pocket money is great. Hey hey hey. Why are you guys just chatting in front of me like this? Making it seem like we're friends. Shiren Army san. Kanzaki said seriously, suddenly having so much money can easily make people lose their way and develop a bad consumption view. It's better to be more restrained. I know. Actually, Hikigaya kun. Iaki knows, seeing his embarrassment, kindly brought up a topic. We discussed with the classmates in the class yesterday that the points issued every month should be related to daily behavior and grades. In simple terms, you should do things that are in line with being a student. It's better to save some points. Sure enough. Sure enough. Iakinos is really amazing. They have obviously speculated about the points and guessed how to get more points. That's right. Chiba smiled at Hikigaya, so if you really feel tired, you can ask the teacher for leave to rest in the health room. What? So it's to remind me not to doze off. In that case... Hikigaya turned his head to look at Shiren Army and Himanoyuki. I'm really sorry just now. Shiren Army blushed slightly and bowed slightly. Obviously, she dropped the eraser on purpose just now, just wanting to create a reason to poke him. After all, dropping an eraser should be a very common thing. It should be able to get a higher evaluation than directly poking someone. No need, how should I put it, thank you guys. Hikigaya nodded. It's great that Shiren Army is not that kind of malicious woman. Shahiro, there is no need to apologize at all. At that moment, Himonoyuki nonchalantly said, This guy didn't want to pick it up at first, he even deliberately glanced at me, expecting me to do it. She obviously knew and intentionally didn't pick it up. Although it's true. This person is really overdoing it. I remember his name was Haim something Yuki, might as well call her Black Cat. Yuki chan. Iakino said somewhat helplessly. Hikigaya kun probably just suspected that the eraser was yours and glanced at you. It's not good to assume the worst of people. That's right. Shiren Army quickly chimed in, and besides, Hikigaya kun picked it up more than a dozen times without getting annoyed or complaining. 
I think that's quite impressive. Ha ha ha, it's not that impressive. Ikigar scratched the back of his head awkwardly. If it were an ordinary person, they would have slapped someone for making them pick up an eraser more than a dozen times in one class. That's right, I'm the impressive person you're talking about. Indeed. Himano Yuki showed an awkward smile and turned her head to say, I'm sorry, Ikigaya kun I misunderstood earlier. It's fine. Ikigaya said indifferently. Huh? What's going on? Why does Black Cat seem a bit out of place with this group? Speaking of which, I have a bottle of coffee I bought this morning. At this point, the Hirokanzaki in front of him took out a can of coffee from the drawer and handed it to him. If you don't mind, take it and drink it. It should help you get through the afternoon. Really? Why does the world suddenly seem so kind to him? He wouldn't be about to transform into a normie from now on, would he? Ha ha ha, thank you, but I don't need it. Hikigai laughed dryly. He had a good sleep last night and just found liberal arts too boring. He didn't need it at all. I see. Kanzaki nodded indifferently and said, Then I'll keep it for now. Let me know if you need it. Hey hey hey. You're being too kind. He even reserved it for him. He wouldn't have any ulterior motives towards him, would he? No need. Hikigaya said awkwardly. It was his first time being surrounded by so many people and having such friendly exchanges. He felt a bit uncomfortable. By the way. At this point, Shibata took over the conversation. After school is the club introduction meeting. Hikigaya kun do you want to come and have a look? Ha ha ha, no. Before Hikigaya could finish his sentence, he heard Kanzaki say, Yeah, we're just missing you. Eh? Hikigaya was slightly taken aback. What does that mean? Speaking of which, who was going to attend a club introduction meeting? He was a pure abreared member of the Going Home Club. Yeah. Iakinos nodded and smiled, Shibatu asked the football club yesterday. The general club introduction meeting is at five in the afternoon on the second day of school, held by the student council. So we discussed it this morning, and we all decided to go to the club introduction meeting together in the afternoon. Right, everyone? Hey hey hey. Someone had actually gone ahead and gathered information from various clubs. You guys are too outstanding. In fact, Shibata just went to the football club to apply for membership. Yes, Hikigaya, let's go together after school. By the way, speaking of which, Hikigaya, do you have any clubs you want to join? Hikigaya wasn't at karaoke yesterday, shall we do it again today? Sure, I agree. I'll book a room in advance. Hikigaya, do you have any dietary restrictions? As Iakinos asked, the classroom became noisy with everyone surrounding him and asking questions. No need. Hikigaya managed to squeeze out a smile, I have something to do in the afternoon. I can only attend the club introduction meeting at most. Is that so? That's a pity. Iakinos said regretfully. I'll definitely come next time. Hikigaya said awkwardly. It's not that he really wanted to join, but he seemed to have heard that the club introduction meeting was held by the student council. And it was written in the enrollment guide. Most of the school affairs are managed by the student council. As for karaoke, he really wasn't used to it. After all, I'm a terrible singer. Chapter 11, Chapter 011, A Plan That Cannot Afford to Fail. Jim Hall No. 1. After School. Hikigai Hakuman followed behind Iakinos and others to the gym hall. At this moment, a considerable number of people had already gathered inside the sports hall. Hikigai twitched at the corner of his mouth. Accidentally catching sight of that lunatic man and the arrogant girl, Horikita Suzun, he chose without hesitation to avoid them. Not long after that, a cute-looking girl with a bun of purple hair appeared on stage. She introduced herself as the student council secretary, Takibana Akane. She started the briefing without beating around the bush, her way of doing things was more pleasing than the rigid principle. Later, a group of people stepped onto the stage, each introducing the charm of their clubs and the benefits of joining them. It was really uninteresting. People from Class B like Shibata were excited, those who were not interested were also discussing various topics, and no one came to disturb him. Underneath the stage, there were also student council members distributing club brochures to people. Hikigai also took one and flipped through it. Its exquisite design, artistic accomplishment, and layout arrangement all made people exclaim at the high abilities of the people in this school. Speaking of which, are you guys really students? If you're so outstanding, 
you might as well graduate and become a corporate slave right away. Flipping through the brochure, Hikigaya couldn't help but raise an eyebrow. The welfare treatment of this school is really too good, not only is the equipment complete but it is also almost top-notch worldwide. For example, all kinds of fitness equipment in the sports department, teaching staff, management, and diet are all top-notch. Other schools could not possibly have them, they might not even have heard of them. The most important thing is that each person receives 5,000 points of department funds every month. After all, there are free food items available. These funds. These seem to be prepared for sports department members who have lost their personal points. After all, free food cannot guarantee the daily physical consumption of the sports department. To be fair, other clubs also have them. The more people there are, the more funds there are. These funds are mainly used to supplement some small items in each department. For example, energy drinks and footballs for daily consumption in the football department. Other training equipment as well as football shoes and team uniforms are taken care of by the school. Although there are restrictions on the direction of fund use. But it's basically enough. The consideration is very comprehensive. Wait a minute, doesn't this mean? Hikigai was excited at the corner of his mouth. Although each club's fund use is restricted. For example, the funds for the literary and art department cannot be used to buy energy drinks or footballs. They can only be used to buy books, stationery and so on. But on the other hand, as long as a club's coverage is wide enough, you can use club funds to replace your own daily expenses. In simple terms, turn funds into your own money. Although it's impossible to cover every aspect of life, it can cover more than half of it. For example, if you establish a gaming department, you can freeload computers and handhelds. However, other people join clubs mainly out of love for them. They genuinely like club activities. It's highly unlikely that I would agree to such a thing. Besides, the clubs in the school are all single clubs with a very narrow coverage. As long as the club has a wide enough coverage, it is the potential to generate substantial funds from the school. However, Hikigaya was also somewhat puzzled. Such an obvious loophole couldn't possibly go unnoticed. Advanced Nurturing High School has been established for over 50 years, it's impossible that no one has tried it. Never mind, this is not important. The key point is. He found a way to add Max Coffee to the school. Don't be nervous, good luck, senior. Ha ha ha, didn't you prepare anything? At this moment, the mocking laughter around him attracted Hikigaya's attention. He looked up. On the stage, a senior in a school uniform stood in front of the microphone, looking calmly at the direction of the first parade. Soon, the initial laughter reached its peak and then fell silent. The originally relaxed atmosphere in the gymnasium, like a chemical reaction, slowly turned into an incredible tension and silence. Anyone could feel that now was not the time to speak. Hikiga swallowed silently, wait a minute, this guy didn't use Zawarudo, right? Does he possess any kind of superpower? Speaking of which, can I still move? Thinking about it, Hikigaya turned his head slightly. Oh, I can still move. That's great. I am Horikita Manabu, the president of the student council. The fake superpower user picked up the microphone. His gentle tone combined with his calm demeanor gradually brought others under his control. Could it be that he was the only one unaffected? In that case, am I also someone with superpowers? Hikigaya thought aimlessly. However, Horikita? Hikigaya glanced at the arrogant woman not far away. He wondered if there was any relationship between them. As the senior grades graduate, the student council will be seeking candidates from the first grade. There are no specific prerequisites for candidates, but if you're interested in joining the student council, we kindly request that you refrain from simultaneous involvement in other clubs. As a general guideline, individuals wishing to join both the student council and other clubs may not be accommodated. After finishing his smooth speech, the fake superpower user stepped down from the stage and walked out of the gymnasium. The first graders could only watch quietly as he left, fearing that speaking would somehow twist their bodies into pretzels. Hikigaya clenched his fists and took a deep breath. He never expected that. The one who held life and death power over Max Coffee would turn out to be a superpower user. It was too terrifying. However, Whoever dared to stop the birth of the god of Max Coffee would be his enemy. As a faithful follower of Max Coffee, I will never forgive them. Thank you for your hard work, and that concludes our explanation. We are now open for club applications.
Additionally, since club applications will be accepted until the end of April, students who wish to apply later can submit their application forms directly to the club of their choice. Tukwibana calmly finished speaking and the tense atmosphere in the venue gradually dissipated as well. Hikigaya asked someone for an application form and sat down to fill it out on one side. Even if his opponent was a superpower user, he had to defeat him for Max Coffey's sake. Hikigaya-san, what club do you want to join? At this time, Iakinos came over with a group of friends from Class B. A. Hikigaya-san is filling out an application form? Which club is it? A group of people behind him were chattering non-stop as if he were some popular figure or something. Ah, sheep shearing club? Hikigaya wasn't too sure. After all, the initial intention was to get free money from school, so calling it the sheep shearing club would be quite fitting, right? His words instantly plunged Iakinos and Shibata into silence. After a while, Iakinos asked somewhat puzzled. I don't think I heard about this club earlier, what kind of club is it? Like the going home club? Hikigaya wasn't too sure about the activities either. Iakinos and others fell silent again. Their classmates' personality seemed a bit abnormal. Then I'll go submit the application form. All right, see you tomorrow, Hikigaya-kun. Hikigaya got up and left with the freshly filled application form, while Iakinos and others waved their arms in farewell. By the time he got to the reception desk under the stage, there was already a small queue in front of the table. He had to wait a while before it was his turn. This is my application. Application forms should be submitted directly to the club you wish to join. The club president is responsible for reviewing them. Before he could finish speaking, the girl with the bun in front of him interrupted him. It seemed her name was Dukabana again. You can't become an excellent student council member like this. This is my club establishment application and suggestion form. Hikigaya handed two A4 papers to her. A? Tukabana Akane took a look and her mouth twitched instantly. Then she nodded seriously and said, We have received your suggestions. The student council will respond within three working days. Next. Hey. Woman, do you think I can't see your scripted response? It's really perfunctory. Hikigaya left helplessly. The Max Coffee plan cannot fail. Chapter 12, Chapter 012, The Most Important Companion. After all, his enemy is that fake superpower user. Hikigaya returned to the dormitory and prepared for the birth ceremony of the god of Max Coffee, then went back to sleep. The next morning. In order to avoid that lunatic, he decided to get up ten minutes earlier but unexpectedly ran into the man with dead fish eyes again. Looking at him who was still standing outside the elevator, Hikigaya fell silent again. He couldn't help but doubt in his heart. This guy is doing it on purpose, right? Right? Definitely, right? Could it be that he has some kind of plot against him? To be honest. His previously impressive grades appeared rather unremarkable within this school, and Hikigaya had little confidence in himself. The only thing worth praising should be this slightly superior face. Could it be? That's too scary. Is society so dangerous nowadays? On the other side. Ayano Kuji was sure that he had been targeted. The other party was definitely a guy with a special fetish. Too scary, he must avoid this guy as much as possible. At this moment, Hikigaya nodded slightly again. Ayano Kuji nodded and walked to the other side, a little further away than yesterday. Hikigaya couldn't help but glance sideways. What does this guy mean? Does he not want to stay in the same elevator with him? What a relief, I thought I was being targeted by some pervert. Feeling the gaze of those dead fish eyes, Ayano Kuji felt a bit uneasy being looked at, which should clearly indicate a refusal. This guy wouldn't be angry, would he? Both of them left the elevator. Ayano Kuji Kiyotaka always hung behind him, which made Hikigaya have to doubt whether this guy was a pervert. They went all the way to school like this. Class 1B. Good morning, Hikigaya-kun. Good morning, Hikigaya-kun. How did you sleep last night? You won't fall asleep today, will you? Ha ha. Well, if there's anything troubling you, feel free to tell me. As soon as he stepped into the classroom, many people greeted him. Hikigaya managed to squeeze out a smile and nodded in response before returning to his seat. What's wrong with these people? They're too enthusiastic. Speaking of which, the last one didn't mean to help at all, rather, she just wanted to make fun of him. This black cat, don't hide. I'm talking about you. Himanoyuki's fake smile was seen through by him at a glance. 
In my mind, I couldn't help but hear the tone of the other person's disdain, even if it's just a joke. Please don't come to me. As the bell rang for class, everyone returned to their seats. Shiran Army's pressure, he didn't fall asleep anymore. Otherwise, the other party might really poke him to death. However, Shiran Army seemed to really have a problem with dropping things. According to observations, the reason is that this girl is daydreaming 100% during class. Most of her attention is focused on yet he knows. That won't do, Shiran Army. Improper relationships between man and women are prohibited. Huh? But, if it's between women it seems okay? With all kinds of wild thoughts in his mind, time flew by quickly and the morning passed quickly. During break time, Aoki Nose would bring a few friends over for a chat. Hikigaya just squeezed out an awkward smile and nodded in response before returning to his seat. Hikigaya-kun, would you like to have lunch together? As Hikigaya gazed at him and Oyuki, along with Shira Nami, Aoki Nose, Shibata, and a few unfamiliar faces before him, he could only offer an awkward nod. These people are simply too enthusiastic. Speaking of which, he hasn't even spoken to most of them. He doesn't even know their full names. However, it seems that no one has ever gotten his name wrong. As expected from a nationally renowned school. They're all too outstanding. Cafeteria. This is his first time in the cafeteria. Apart from being more luxurious than usual cafeterias there's no difference between them and regular ones. The most important thing is. There's actually free mountain vegetable set meals available. Finally no more toast and instant noodles. Great. Without thinking too much he chose the mountain vegetable set meal. His taste buds only needed max coffee, yes, he was a man determined to become a house husband. Fortunately. The cafeteria tables were for four people. Aoki knows, Hira Kanzaki, and Shibata sat next to him, and the others had no choice but to choose other vacant seats. Although it's been said that it's best to save some points. Shibata looked at Ikigaya chewing on his mountain vegetables in front of him and was somewhat puzzled. But there's no need to save to this extent. I heard that the mountain vegetable set meal doesn't taste very good. Ikigaya kun, you can choose the more delicious and nutritious B set meal or C set meal. Hmm. Isn't it better to have more private points? Ikigaya responded casually, not caring about the taste. As long as he had max coffee, he could survive. This was a superpower that only the chosen ones could have. Speaking of which, this mountain vegetable is too bitter and astringent. It's even worse than instant noodles. But mountain vegetables are healthier and more nutritious. However, upon hearing his words, Aoki knows and the others were all stunned. Eh? Eh? Hikigai also followed with him, shrinking back a bit nervously and said, What's wrong? It's over. Was his attitude not good enough when he spoke just now? I'm sorry, please forgive me. It's nothing. Hira Kanzaki looked at him sharply and said, What do you mean by private points that you just mentioned? What do you mean? It's literally private points? Hikigaya asked back somewhat puzzled. No. Kanzaki shook his head, looking scrutinizingly at him. At this stage, we only have the concept of points. I feel that your so-called private points are different from our understanding of points. Could you please explain in detail? I see. Teachers like Hoshinomiya and others emphasized this aspect, but at this point, points were the only thing everyone understood. What? You geese still don't know after all this time? Perhaps I'm quite amazing? Points are divided into private points and class points. Hikigaya briefly explained his conversation with Hoshinomiya sensei. Just made some not so fundamental changes. Maybe he just forgot about it. Anyway, it's roughly the same. So that's how it is. Shibata from next door pinched his chin and fell into thought. I've always felt that there was no need for the school to hide this. This explains it. However. Kanzaki looked somewhat displeased. Why didn't you tell us earlier? Ha ha ha. Hikigai laughed dryly. Didn't you guys tell me to save points? I thought you guys already knew. What? This guy is too scary. Very well. From today onwards you've been demoted from Hira Kanzaki to Iceberg Boy. That's. Kanzaki softened his gaze, indeed, it was our lack of communication that caused unnecessary misunderstandings. Yes, we need to strengthen our communication in the future. Everyone has their own areas of expertise. Aoki Nose clapped her hands admiringly, nodded at Hikigaya and said, We thought this was a test from the school to the students. As long as we perform well, we will receive more points every month. We never considered competition between classes. 
Hikiga-san is really amazing for noticing this. Ha ha ha. Hikiga laughed dryly, it's nothing, knowing these things doesn't mean anything. Indeed it doesn't mean anything. Even if they knew about it, it wouldn't affect class B at all. We can't say that. Shibata shook his head and laughed, we were just lucky before. As long as we're one step ahead of other classes, it's meaningful enough. More importantly. Kanzaki looked at him approvingly and nodded, we now know your strength. Don't be modest. Your insight will undoubtedly be one of Class B's most powerful weapons. Since it will be competition between classes in the future, Hikigaya's ability is indispensable. Not a weapon though. Iakinos quickly corrected, even without this ability, Hikigaya-san is still our most important friend. Kanzaki paused slightly and nodded slightly. Looking at Hikigaya's mountain vegetable set meal. I misspoke earlier, please forgive me. As an apology, how about a set meal eh? No need. I'm already full. Hikigaya laughed dryly, if you want to treat me to a meal, say it earlier. For some reason. Regarding the 20 million private points required for promotion to class A. He didn't really want to tell these people. Chapter 13, Chapter 013, Public Execution, Every Blonde is My Enemy. The afternoon classes were extremely boring. But Hikigaya still mustered up the energy to study diligently. It is to be said dot I have to say. Iaki knows is a very infectious person, and everything she says seems to be correct, as if not doing as she says would bring about a strong sense of guilt. Whenever class ended, there would be quite a few people gathering around Hikigaya. Occasionally someone would bring up a topic, and he wouldn't refuse. Just propping his face up with one hand on the desk and occasionally nodding his head, as if he had already adapted to this feeling of being popular. It seemed that Iakinos had already shared the information with the class, and from time to time people would say words of praise. Isn't this the life he dreamed of in junior school? However, in the end, it felt like something was wrong, an indescribable feeling of irritation spreading in his heart. Until after school, a purple-haired girl knocked on the classroom door. Takaben and Akane Senpai, why are you here? Is there something you need? Iakinos stepped forward to greet her. It was clear that they knew each other. This was only the third day of school, and the opportunity was most likely yesterday's club introduction meeting. As expected of the Akinos, they had only met once. The two seemed to have a very good relationship already. Hikigaya didn't care and packed up his bag. I'm here for Hikigaya Hakuman. Please ask him to come with me to the student council. Tukaben and Akane said somewhat unhappily. Eh? Me? Hikigaya put down his bag and looked at her in surprise. So you're here, then come with me. See you next time, Iaki knows. After saying goodbye to Iaki knows, Takibanu Akane turned around and left directly. Hikigaya also put down his bag and followed her out. Hikigaya kun. As they left the classroom, Iaki knows lowered her voice in confusion. I saw that Takibanu Akane's senpai seemed a bit unhappy. Did you do something? I don't know, maybe it's about the club application. Hikigaya gave a simple explanation and left the classroom. The application form he submitted yesterday is already under review today. It can be seen that the efficiency of the student council is high. It is clear that this school must be a black company that specializes in exploiting students. The fake ability user must be a black-hearted president. Forget it. In any case, the matter of Max Coffee must be put first. Hikigaya didn't know why, but he suddenly felt very tired. By the way, where did he offend this senior? Why does it feel like she's very dissatisfied with him? Hikigaya thought maliciously as he followed Tukaben and Akane to the student council office. Tukaben and Akane pushed open the door, and Hikigaya followed closely behind her. What was placed in front of him was a long table. The fake ability user Horikita sat in the middle position with his hands crossed under his chin, and his glasses seemed to reflect white light. Commander, you must have been a commander in your past life. I will call you commander from now on. Could it be that he's going to start learning how to drive Unit 01 today? It feels like he accidentally discovered the true image of the school by accident. On his left hand side was a blonde who was arranging work methodically. The nameplate on her desk read Vice President Naguma Mayabi. He must be a popular blonde. There were also bystanders 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 number next to him. Sit down. Horikita spoke in a deep voice, his tone revealing an irresistible pressure. What is this? It's too scary. Hikigaya obediently sat down across from him. Hikigaya. 
Horikita picked up a file from the table. This is the two pieces of material you submitted yesterday. Do you remember? R, yes. Hikigaya nodded. What's going on with this guy? If he didn't know any better, he might believe he's facing a trial in a military court. Was what he wrote really that bad? Very well. Horikita handed one of the materials to someone next to him. To Kaben and Akane, it's your turn. It seemed to be an unspoken agreement among students. When she received the material, other student council members straightened their posture and pricked up their ears. Huh? What are they doing? Is this going to be a public execution? No way, please no. However, his prayers were useless. Tukaben and Akane calmly began reading. Letter of Opinion to the Advanced Nurturing High School Student Council. Students without Max Coffee are like the Westerner without Jesus. Proposal 1. Introduce Max Coffee to school shops and vending machines. According to scientific research, sugar can effectively improve learning efficiency, listed the benefits of sugar in approximately 1,000 words. Proposal 2. Add hidden shops in the Kiaki Mall shopping center, such as Ten Capin, Turin or Anna, Raymond Brands, etc. This move can bring surprises to students, effectively improve the happiness of students on campus, and enhance learning efficiency. List the contributions made by Raymond to Sibura Island in the 1930s, which can effectively enhance happiness and maintain social stability, and so on more 1,000 words. Proposal 3. Install a Men Are Welcome sign at the entrance of Palette Cafe. This initiative can assist introverted males in enhancing their communication skills. I want to die, I really want to die. I didn't realize what I wrote was so embarrassing. Hikigai Hukuman forced out an awkward smile. He had been to Palette Cafe. After all, it's a coffee shop. He originally wanted to find a substitute for Max Coffee, or maybe they had it directly inside. But Palette is full of girls, giving off a no men allowed atmosphere. If it weren't for occasionally seeing a blonde guy walking into the shop, he would have thought it was a women-only shop. Anyway, it's just about finding fault with the school, which is his forte. Therefore, Hikigai Hukuman quickly wrote out more than a dozen items. For example, add elevators and provide regular psychological counseling for students. Yes, it's aimed at that lunatic with dead fish A's. It's really too scary. How can the school let such people in? Boys also need to protect themselves outside, damn it. End. Tacha Ben and Akane read until her mouth was dry. It took her ten minutes to finish reading. She immediately glared at Hikigaya Hakuman. It was simply hateful. Do you understand? Commander Horikita Sazun said in a deep voice, it seems that our student council still has many oversights. I didn't expect there to be so many problems. Huh? It seems like he's praising him? What? It turns out that this is not a public execution. He was almost scared to death. Hikigai Hakuman breathed a sigh of relief, and the surrounding student council members bowed their heads in shame. It's simply dereliction of duty for the student council to let a freshman find so many problems. But, Tukaben and Akane said somewhat dissatisfied, President, I think most of them are nonsense. This person is really too much. Indeed, more than 90% of them are nonsense. Horikita Manabu did not deny, but each one hits the nail on the head. This is a rare ability. Ha! Huh. Hikigai Hukuman secretly breathed a sigh of relief. Anyway, it seems that he has received high praise from the commander here. Shouldn't there be any problem with Max Coffee? Just at this moment, Max Coffee. Naguma Maiabi, the blonde guy, joked, I remember it's a specialty of Chiba, I had the good fortune to drink it once. It was so sweet that it made people feel greasy, I didn't expect anyone would like to drink this kind of thing. Huh? Hikigai Hukuman gave him a gloomy look. There are actually people who don't like Max Coffee. Enemy. It's simply heresy. Max Coffee will never forgive anyone who disrespects it. Blonde guys are just blonde guys, annoying existence. However, the ceremony for the birth of the Max Coffee God is unstoppable. Chapter 14, Chapter 014, Invitation from the Student Council. Students at ANHS hail from various regions across Japan. Commander Horikita solemnly said, it's normal to have different tastes. The school has indeed failed to consider the feelings of all students. In terms of living, ANHS is quite generous basically responsive to requests, as long as there are enough points, most desires can be satisfied. However, Hikigaya looked a bit surprised. Why does it feel like the commander and the blondie are not getting along? However, 
it's normal for the first and second hands of the student council to be at odds. He likes watching conflicts in small circles. That deserve it. Indeed. Naguma Mayabi helplessly spread her hands, as expected of my beloved senior Horikita, who can frankly admit his shortcomings. Hey. Don't give up, little blondie. As the antagonist, you should just go directly and beat up the commander, right? Hikigaya was eager to see them fight in his heart. This is your other club application form. Commander Horikita didn't care either, picked up another material and said. Sheep shearing club, activities include ping pong, tennis, basketball, tea ceremony, calligraphy, flower arrangement, video games, literature and other aspects. What does this mean? Takabana Akane was a bit speechless. This is quite obvious, the desire to plunder the school's funds. Don't you have any shame? You are daring to suggest the establishment of a club like this. It means literally. Hikigaya said indifferently. In fact, this is just his discarded proposal. When the other party refuses a proposal, they will easily pass another proposal out of embarrassment. Sheep shearing club doesn't matter at all. Max Coffee and Raymond are the most important. It's really undisguised. Commander Horikita pushed his glasses and said, Forget it, this application can be passed. Eh? Why, you look a bit unbelievable. Commander Horikita instantly saw through his thoughts and explained calmly. Regardless of the reason, your ability to come up with this idea is your strength. However, it does involve sacrificing your personal time after school in return. From my perspective, this doesn't seem like a favorable arrangement. For a little bit of petty profit, sacrificing time with friends is obviously not worth it in most people's eyes. This is where the advantage of being a loner is reflected. He doesn't care about these at all. And also, Komaki is not there, there is nothing to do when returning to the dormitory. Whether staying in school or returning to the dormitory makes no difference to him. Moreover, Commander Horikita continued, every year clubs need to produce results, sports clubs need to maintain results. Other clubs also have their own tasks. Just holding naive ideas to take advantage of it is not a long-term plan. There really are no loopholes to drill through. After all these years, there must have been people who wanted to plunder the school's funds, but they all failed in the end. Forget it, I can plunder as much as I can. Anyway, the commander doesn't appear to oppose him in this matter. After all, it's all school funds and doesn't concern the commander. But, you can choose another path. Commander Horikita raised his hand and looked at the man in front of him, Hikigaya, join the student council. You can also get extra private points every month. It's much better than setting up a club. Damn it. So this is your plan. Is it okay to tell me about private points directly? Hikigaya said listlessly. He didn't believe that someone who could become a commander would be a fool. He is unlikely to easily leak something like this. And also, who would want to be a corporate slave for this black-hearted commander, in your dream. Although he wants to improve his life by plundering money. But this is just a discarded plan. It doesn't matter whether it succeeds or not. As long as Max Coffee can pass. It's fine. Commander Horikita didn't care, this afternoon Iakinos confirmed with us about class points and private points. I heard that the answer came from you. Whether it's a sharp opinion book or keen insight, you are undoubtedly qualified to join the student council. Give up setting up a club and join the student council. How about it? I accidentally got high praise from Commander Horikita here. This is not good news. Getting targeted by a ruthless president could lead to being squeezed to death. Ha ha ha. Hikigai Hakuman chuckled and said, I refuse. He wouldn't fall for this. I see. Horikita Manabu stared at the junior in front of him and nodded, it seems I misunderstood before. Your goal is not for money, but to use this application as a sacrifice to let the previous proposal pass? Ah. Hikigai was choked. This black-hearted commander is too powerful, he saw through his thoughts so quickly. It's normal, after all, if it's not for points, it can only be for other reasons. Maybe it's just a simple test. But Hikigaya tends to think that this black-hearted commander has guessed his plan. Forget it. Horikita Manabu calmly said, you can think about joining the student council. If you still want to establish a club, you need three formal members. The list should be handed over to the student council before the end of April. You can go back. Then excuse me. Hikigaya turned around without hesitation and left. Hikigaya. At this moment, the blonde Naguma Mayabi suddenly spoke, 
Aren't you concerned about whether the proposal will be approved? That's true. What will happen to that proposal? The purchase of Max Coffee will be passed. You just need to pay more attention to the school announcement later. Oh, is that so? Thank you. Then I'll leave first. Hikigaya nodded his head, made a victory gesture in his heart and turned around and left. It turns out that his purpose has been seen through by these people. It's normal. I can't survive without Max Coffee. The game starts by directly smashing the goal into someone else's face. It would be even stranger if they didn't notice it. It seems. Whether it's the discarded plan or the final result. After Hikigaya left, Naguma Mayabi laughed and joked, he knew the answer early on. But what is his reason for doing this? Takabana Akane was a little confused. In the end, this person has been obsessed with Max Coffee all the time. Not worried at all. Obviously determined that the school will definitely agree. After all, it's just a few boxes of drinks. Although the school management is strict, online shopping is also possible. The school has no reason to refuse at all. However, proposing an item that will definitely be passed in a roundabout way. Are you crazy? Why not just say it directly? He also cited a lengthy nonsense that almost dried her throat from reading it out loud. How would I know? Naguma Mayabi twitched at the corner of her mouth. He couldn't guess this alone. After a while, he said. President Horikita, is this the person you chose? You are free to think whatever you want. Horikita Manobu lifted another file and explained dispassionately, nonetheless, he possesses the qualifications and the capacity to join the student council, though he can only be deemed as possessing above average talent. That's true. Naguma Mayabi nodded in agreement without any objection. After all, how could someone who could see through the rules of this school on the first day of school be mediocre? But that's it. He simply isn't very adept at communication and appears to have some personality issues. I don't know who taught him to beat around the bush. Chapter 15 Chapter 15 The Astonished Yakinos and Others After leaving the student council, Hikigai was about to go back to the classroom to get his bag, only to find that Yakinos and Kanzaki were still in the classroom chatting with their bags on their backs. Are you crazy? Just pack up your bags and go to dormitory. Noticing his presence, the two of them hurried over like friends. Hikigaya kun are you okay? Iakinos asked with some concern, did the student council want something from you? It's nothing. Hikigaya put his bag on his shoulder, put his hands in his pockets, and walked out. At the same time, he explained, we just talked about my application form and they asked me to join the student council. The two of them hurriedly followed, and were slightly taken aback by his words. You were chosen by the student council? Kanzaki exclaimed in surprise. It's not a big deal. Hikigaya walked down the stairs nonchalantly, isn't Yakinos also on good terms with the student council? It should be easy for you to join the student council. Being able to establish a good relationship with seniors in just a few days and even being remembered by name. Rather, Yakinos is really amazing. That's not true. Iakinos scratched her hair, somewhat embarrassed. Yesterday, both I and Kachuragi from Class A were rejected by the student council. Not only seniors, but even Kachuragi from Class A knew him. Iakinos is really amazing. Eh? Hikigaya glanced at Iakinos and Kanzaki. Speaking of which, why are you two so close to me? Someone who doesn't know might think we're friends. He was already able to chat casually with Iakinos and others. I'm just not sure if this kind of closeness can be called friendship. Anyway. We are not friends. After all, he didn't even know the full names of Yakinos and Hiro Kanzaki. He should have heard them the day before yesterday, but he quickly forgot them. No no. Yakinos shook her head, his brilliant smile dimming, this shows that I still have some shortcomings. On the contrary, Hikigaya Kun being recognized by Horikita Senpai is what's truly impressive. That's right. Kanzaki exclaimed in surprise with some unexpected tone, to be honest, I was surprised that you could join the student council. You know, except for you, Horikita Senpai didn't accept anyone from this year. Being recognized by Horikita Senpai is enough to prove your strength. Unconsciously. Kanzaki raised his evaluation of Hikigaya again, while feeling a little puzzled inside. Apart from his insight. He couldn't discern what made this introverted guy stand out more than Yakinos and Kachuragi but having Horikita Senpai's recognition was enough. Getting recognized by Horikita Senpai was not an easy thing. I didn't join them. 
Huh? Didn't you just say that Horikita Senpai invited you to join student council? I refused. Hikigai spoke indifferently as if he was talking about an insignificant matter. The three of them walked towards the dormitory together. Eh? Aoki nose looked surprised. Kanzaki on the side was even more stunned. Why did you refuse? I heard that joining the student council not only gets higher evaluations but also extra personal points every month. There should be no one who would refuse? Well, there are many reasons. Hikigaya felt indifferent. After all, both the Akinos and Kanzaki were people who knew how to act according to the atmosphere. As long as he didn't want to say it, he believed they wouldn't ask too much. For example? Unexpectedly, Kanzaki frowned and asked directly. He was kind and considerate just now. Why did he suddenly change into another person? This is too scary. Well. Hikigaya glanced at him and still explained, I don't want to sacrifice my personal time to serve others. Isn't it better to play in the dormitory if I have this time? Besides, I find that yellow-haired senpai annoying. Although he shouldn't have said these things, Hikigaya still made his tone a bit harsher and expressed his true feelings from his heart. He was such a petty person. How dare he belittle Max Coffee? Naguma Mayabi has become someone he cannot forgive in his heart. How would Yaki Nose and Kanzaki view such a harsh person? Hikigaya Hakuman was watching the front, but he was somewhat concerned about the thoughts of the two. Yaki Nose and Kanzaki fell into silence at the same time. Unexpectedly. The originally reserved Hikigaya, saying such selfish words so directly, even belittled the student council vice president he had only met once. Fortunately, it was just the two of them. If the people in the class heard it, his evaluation might drop to the lowest point directly. Hikigaya Hakuman observed that the two did not speak, and silently walked towards the dormitory building. Anyway. These are his inner thoughts. Although he wouldn't do anything to that blonde guy, that blonde guy is absolutely unforgivable. Anyway. That blonde guy probably saw through his thoughts at first glance, just like Horikita Manabu. The worst thing is. He mocked others' tastes when he first met them. That blonde guy is obviously not a good thing, so it's better to have less contact. Well. Aoki knows ease the somewhat awkward silence, Hikigaya kun, would you like to go with us to Palette Cafe? No, I have to go back for dinner. Although he knew that Aoki knows wanted to ease the atmosphere, Hikigaya Hakuman had no intention of cooperating. He only ate some mountain vegetable set meal at noon, and now he is almost starving to death. Aoki knows and Kanzaki looked at each other. Then let's go to Palette Cafe and eat together. Kanzaki nodded, as an apology for noon. I said I would treat you to dinner. I won't forget what I promised others, otherwise it will always be on my mind. Troublesome guy. Yeah. Aoki knows also followed with a smile, let's go together. We just want to discuss with you about the class points. If it's just for a while. Hikigaya Hakuman looked at the two and reluctantly agreed. Pallid cafe. As soon as he walked into the shop, someone greeted Aoki knows. At the same time, he could feel several hesitant and scrutinizing gazes. It seems to be doubting how Yaki knows would associate with such a person. This situation. It's like a social occasion for ladies. The accompanying men are simply proof of their status. Here Kanzaki naturally has no problem. He will only lower Yaki knows's evaluation. Anyway. Although he only remembers him and Oyuki, Shirakawa, Hira Kanzaki, Shibatu and Yaki knows in class B, he has no impression of other people. But people in class B will take the initiative to greet him. It can be seen that these should be people from other classes. Not bad Yaki knows, excellent social skills. Karu san Sato-san, Matsushitaki Aki, Yoho. Yaki knows waved his arm and greeted several people. Kanzaki stood by and naturally joined the conversation. Although this guy always had a cold face, his social skills were not a problem at all. I'll go grab a seat first. Without waiting for Yaki knows and others to speak up, Hikigai Hakuman left a sentence and turned around and left. Palette is indeed a high popularity shop for girls. It took a long time to find a place for three people to sit down. Three pasta sets please. He handed the menu in his hand to the waiter next to him. The cafe seems to operate on a system where you place your order, then pay at the counter with a receipt. It's not that he enjoys making decisions unilaterally without considering Aoki knows his feelings, but he intends to cover the expenses himself. Kanzaki only slightly questioned his words at noon. It was far from reaching the level of inviting guests to dinner. The most important thing is. 
Although free lunch is the best meal, he doesn't want to accept such favor. If you pay for it yourself, the other party has no right to complain. Before long, Aoki knows and Kanzaki found this side. Looking at the three pasta sets on the table was somewhat puzzled. Would a pasta set meal be to your liking? Yes. I quite like pasta. The two looked at each other and sat opposite each other. There was no displeasure on their faces at all. By the way, I also have something I want to discuss with you. Chapter 16, Chapter 016, How Do You Dare To Think About It? Hikigaya took out the application form from his bag and handed it to Iakinos and the others across from him. This is the new club I've established. I need to recruit two new official members. If possible, could you sign on it? Normally, you just need to be a ghost member, which won't affect your personal life. That being said, he also has no reason to invite others to dinner. Helping to sign and being a ghost member is reasonable, right? Eh? Iakinos said with some apology, I'm sorry, Hikigaya kun Although I hasn't been recognized by the student council yet, I still want to join the student council more. Is that so? Then there's nothing I can do. Hikigaya didn't care and nodded, looking at Kanzaki next to him. The sheep shearing club is a trivial matter. It's best to shear it. If you're interested, that's wonderful. If not, that's perfectly fine. Looking at the application form in her hand, Kanzaki gradually frowned. This is a scam, right? Iakino's next to her picked up the application form and looked at it. She gradually became helpless. Hikigaya kun, this kind of scamming idea is not good. This is naturally a bad thing. It's absolutely absurd to consider scamming money from ANHS. No one is hurt, so it doesn't matter. Hikigaya was a bit speechless and quickly added, even the comma. Horogai Senpai has approved it, so don't worry about it. I've thought about being rejected, but I didn't expect to be rejected for such a reason. These two people are too upright. It's President Horikita. Iakino's kindly reminded. Oh, so the commander is named that, huh? Actually, he does remember, truly remembers, you know. Speaking of which, Kanzaki seemed to remember something and looked up curiously. What's your name? Hikigaya, don't you know? No, I just heard Hoshinimiya call your name at the beginning of school and barely remembered it, but I don't know the full name. Hey, is it for real? That's one way to make a lasting impression, unexpectedly impressive, Hira Kanzaki. Oh, Hikigaya's name is called Hakuman. Iaki knows explained with a bright smile on her face. I was shocked. Hikigaya looked at her a bit surprised. He remembered that he should not have revealed his name anywhere. Is Kanzaki really remembered when school started? Is Iaki knows a superpower? Don't be so surprised. Iaki knows was a bit embarrassed, actually. I learned about it from Hoshinamiya sensei. And also, Hikigaya hasn't joined the class group yet, right? What's your line? Line seems to be a chat software. I heard Komaki mention it before. It has been popular for a while. Actually, I haven't used that thing yet. Hikigaya said somewhat embarrassedly. It's just that he hasn't used it because he doesn't have friends. He usually contacts his family by text message. Eh? Iaki knows and Kanzaki were stunned. Where did this caveman come from? How about registering one right now? Iakinos said with a smile, we are all in the same class. It will be more convenient to notify anything in the future. R. O. Hikigaya took out his student ID from his pocket and started operating. In this school. The class group is probably necessary. But, in his view. While there's no need to join, there's also no need to decline. If I don't like it, just ignore it. I heard there's even a do not disturb function, I can simply activate this feature when I get back. But, the recent apps are indeed too complex, just like a girl's wardrobe full of shoes, what's the use, after all? Hikigaya Hakuman was operating his phone and sweating profusely. He shouldn't let the other party wait too long, right? Could it be that he's the only one who thinks this way? Sensing his embarrassment, Iakinos got up from her seat and approached him. Fortunately, Iakinos seemed to be a person who was very good at grasping social distance. The distance was not too far or too close, which would not make people feel awkward. It was very comfortable. The second one, just click on the download next to it. Iakinos said softly. The school's mobile phone does not have a bunch of pre-installed software, basically downloaded according to needs, so that he can't find what this is at all. If it's a mobile phone bought outside the store, it shouldn't be so troublesome. Once Hikigaya downloaded it, 
he found himself in a quandary once more. The school's line and various apps appeared to be intricately tailored for specific purposes, distinguishing them from typical software. Kanzaki was drinking coffee and observing the scene in front of him. Lack of communication skills, lack of general knowledge, bad character, love to take advantage of small benefits, insensitivity to others' feelings, and unauthorized food ordering. Really, I can't think of it. How in the world could Horikita Manabu recognize the man in front of him? Do you need my help? Iakino said bluntly. This honesty is better than those who mock him. Step-by-step -step guidance will only increase pressure and make people feel their own incompetence. So this makes him feel more comfortable. I'll leave it to you. Ikigaya handed over his phone without hesitation. Under his gaze, Iakinos's jade fingers danced quickly and returned it soon. You've now joined the class group. Feel free to greet everyone. I've also included my contact details. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me anytime. Absolutely not. What if saying hello suddenly cools down the lively class group? Hikigaya looked at the growing red dot on the chat interface and silently refused. Yes, thank you. Hikigaya quickly looked up at Kanzaki in front of him and changed the topic, how about it? Although it was a headless sentence, he believed that Hiro Kanzaki would definitely understand. R? Kanzaki nodded slightly, if it's just a ghost member, I don't have any objections. As he said that. Kanzaki took out Ben from Heisberg and wrote his name on the application form. What a great person. Although his face is cold, he is much more likable than Shibata who is now full of energy. Iakinos seemed to have something to say, but after looking at him, she didn't speak. She just turned the direction of the opposite noodle set meal and sat quietly beside him. By the way. At Kanzaki's suggestion, the two exchanged contact information again. Suddenly there were two more friends. This was something that could not be imagined in junior high school. But for some reason. Hikigaya felt a bit hot-handed. The three of them chatted casually while eating pasta. Hikigaya casually said. Isn't there something else to discuss? That's right. Kanzaki across from him nodded her head. He turned serious, as you've guessed, there will be competition between classes in the future, and only class A students get the privilege to choose career or universities freely. So private points will definitely be a powerful weapon. The more private points you have, the better. From what I've observed, there are individuals who, despite not being extravagant, don't seem to manage their expenses sensibly. So we want to save up private points for our class and let Iaki knows keep them all together. Each month we distribute 30,000 private points. What do you think? Hikigaya was simply stunned. How could he dare to think about this? Chapter 17 Chapter 017 I can't pretend anymore, Iaki knows his gentleness. Kanzaki's suggestion It's completely like letting a corporate slave hand over the hard-earned salary of the month to a colleague for safekeeping. It's even more capitalist than a capitalist. Cough. Hikigaya coughed a little speechlessly and said, Whose idea is this? Only Akino's benefits from this. He somewhat doubted that this wouldn't be Akino's opinion, right? Did he misread it? Was Akino's a well disguised scheming bitch? It's my idea. Kanzaki explained solemnly, After all, I also know that I don't have the popularity like Akino's. The person who can make Class B feel at ease to hand over their private points should be only Aki knows, right? It's only been a few days since school started. Kanzaki doesn't seem to be a dog that has been infatuated by a woman. It's great that Aki knows is not a scheming bitch. However, correspondingly, Kanzaki who can propose such an opinion is simply a devil. From today on, let's call him Devil Kanzaki. Aki knows, what about you? Hikigaya looked at Aki knows next to him. The most critical thing is the opinion of the person involved. I have the same idea. Iakinos nodded and said frankly, since this school has frequent dropouts, the school should also prepare measures to prevent dropouts. The more personal points you have, the safer it is. I don't want anyone to leave this class. Hikigaya kun what do you think? Hikigaya twitched at the corner of his mouth. The difference is that Kanzaki tends to use personal points as weapons, while Iakinos tends to use them as defensive means. However, isn't it too naive? Who would hand over their money to others for safekeeping? This concerns the whole class. Private points are not a small matter. It's better to care more about other people's opinions. Hikigaya said righteously. Although he doesn't like these social phrases, he has to say that they are really useful when refusing. 
through some rigid sentences, you can maintain a polite attitude and imply the meaning of your refusal to the other party. Indeed. Kanzaki nodded his head. Indeed, it should be voluntary participation. Iakinos also smiled and nodded her head. It's great to be able to discuss with Ikigaya-kun. Yes, it's great to be able to help. Ikigaya nodded. It feels like the two of them don't care too much. After all, letting classmates hand over private points to someone for safekeeping is unrealistic in itself. Both of them are much better than him and naturally understand this point. It can only be done on voluntary basis. I'm concerned that they're simply using this proposal as a pretext to get closer to him. Thinking about it. Hikigaya couldn't help but squeeze the paper cup in his hand. I'm going to the bathroom. As he said that. Hikigaya got up and left, walked around several dining tables and walked into the bathroom. Looking at the dead fish eyes reflected in the mirror, Hikigaya looked gloomy and looked up at the ceiling for a long time without saying a word. I can't pretend anymore. After a long time. He left the bathroom, turned around and came to the front desk, took out the small ticket from his pocket and paid the bill, then returned to the dining table. However, before he got close, he heard Iakinose's worried voice. Sure enough, it still doesn't work. Iakinose's white little hand dragged her cheek and looked out of the window muttering, What should I do to make Hikigaya can fit into the class? In fact. Kanzaki sighed, I think most of it is his own problem. We don't need to care so much. Just take what just happened for example. Although I don't know what reason he has, but leaving without saying a word. It will only lower Iakinose's evaluation in front of people like Iakinose and others even more. If it weren't for Iakinose's own social skills being excellent enough, she would definitely become a laughing stock. In Kanzaki's eyes. This is completely Hikigaya's own problem. He doesn't understand how to read the atmosphere. Although Kanzaki also doesn't like communicating with people, he understands the importance of read the atmosphere. Kanzaki kun. Iakinose said somewhat seriously, Hikigaya kun is just not good at communication. It should be caused by past experiences. As classmates, shouldn't we take more care of him? Well, that's true. Kanzaki also agreed and nodded her head. I see that he is not very good at dealing with many people. Sure enough, two people are still too many. All right, leave the rest to me. Iakinose nodded confidently. On the other side. Hikigaya Hakuman leaned against the wall, looking up at the ceiling. Actually. He is always new. From the beginning, Class B's enthusiasm was abnormal, and Iakinose and Kanzaki found excuses to discuss with him. Iakinose must have greeted everyone in the class. She is really a gentle and good girl. Everyone in the class is kind to him, and they will surround him and care about him after class. No one will forget his name, and no one will laugh at his speech that often makes people feel awkward. Such an environment is too warm. These are experiences he has never had from childhood to adulthood, a fulfilling life. So much that. He didn't want to tell Iakinos and others about the 20 million private points. He fears that his personal interests might influence this good class, causing Iakinos and others to see his despicable side. Instead. It makes him even more despicable. He understand this clearly. He enjoyed the comfortable environment Iakinos had created without a worry. Deliberately feigning ignorance. Undoubtedly, he's using Iakinos's kindness to experience the fulfilling life he has always wanted. Maybe it's because he just graduated from junior high school. There is still a bit of unrealistic longing in his heart. Disgusting. Hikigaya Hakuman clenched his fist, took a deep breath, turned round and walked to the two as if nothing had happened. Is it almost done? Yeah. Kanzaki picked up the tray naturally, I have something else to do, you guys go back first. Is that so, see you tomorrow, Kanzaki-kun. Iakinos nodded knowingly. Hikigaya Hakuman on the side picked up his school bag and walked out with a smirk. Iakinos also hurriedly followed up. Table 13's bill, please. Kanzaki made his way to the cashier's counter, carrying his tray. Remembering that this meal was his treat. As for Iakinos, it's just a meal and there's no need to take it to heart. Sorry, table 13 has already been paid for. Huh? Kanzaki turned back somewhat unexpectedly, but he could no longer see the figures of the two. On the other side. Hikigaya-kun. Iakinos walked side by side with him, smiling brightly. About clothes, what are you going to do with your clothes? What clothes? Aren't you going to buy clothes? Don't we have school uniforms? Although that's true, 
You always need a few sets of casual clothes for weekends and summer and winter vacations, right? Indeed. Hikigai Hakuman responded listlessly. There are many pedestrians returning to the dormitory around, and there are also students who plan to go to Kiaki Mall shopping center for fun. In the past, my mum would buy some weird tasting clothes. Buy whatever I want to buy. There are no requirements either. This is indeed something he didn't consider. He needs to consider these things when he starts living alone. Do you want to go shopping at Kiaki Mall shopping center together on weekends? What about others? If you don't mind, can everyone go together? What do you think, Hikigaya-kun? Well, I'd like to visit the supermarket as well. Hikigaya-kun only had a mountain vegetable set meal for lunch. What about your other meals? Whatever. He could feel that Yakinos was constantly looking for topics, but this feeling made him feel more uncomfortable. Near the dormitory building, there are fewer people around. Yakinos. Hikigaya Hakuman finally spoke. Chapter 18, Chapter 018, I Hate Gentle People. Huh? Yakinos halted her steps, only to realize that the other party had already stopped without her noticing. She turned around to look at Hikigaya, a hint of confusion in her voice. What's wrong? Hikigaya? Huh. Hikigaya took a deep breath. Once he spoke, there would be no turning back. And his long desired ordinary life would come to an end. However, he still had to speak up. He couldn't continue to take advantage of Yakinose's kindness and cause trouble for them. Otherwise, he would only despise himself more. Yakinose is really gentle. Hikigaya's lips curled into a bitter smile. Actually, you don't have to care about me at all. Being alone is entirely my problem. I'm sorry for making you worry. But from now on, you don't have to worry about me anymore. If you're being nice to me out of pity, then, I'd rather you didn't. Hikigaya clenched his fist, finishing his words in one breath. Iakino stood in front of him, her pretty face blank, unable to speak for a long time. Also, there's the fact that if you save up 20 million points, you can buy the right to transfer classes and move up to class A. The idea that points can buy anything should be similar. Hikigaya relayed the last piece of information and walked past her in silence. He hates gentle girls. A simple greeting would make him care. A few emails would make his heart race. An occasional phone call, just looking at the call log would make him smile involuntarily. But he knew. This was just her gentleness. Those who were gentle to him were also gentle to others. If the truth was cruel, then lies must be gentle. So gentleness is a lie. However, even though he was well aware of this, he was still moved by Iakinos and indulged in the lie called gentleness. Causing trouble for Iakinos and Kanzaki and others. He despised himself even more for it. What Kanzaki said was right. Being alone was his problem. He couldn't cause trouble for them anymore. The next day, after confronting Iakinos, life returned to normal again. No more enthusiastic classmates came up to greet him. Iakinos and Shirenami and others also returned to their usual routines. Speaking of which, the level of this school is too high. Hikigaya sat alone by the poolside. His dead fish eyes silently watched Chiba and others who were competing. These people could easily rival national athletes. Today's swimming class truly made him realize the strength of his classmates. If it weren't for cycling to school throughout middle school, he definitely wouldn't be able to keep up. Even so, he could only rank in the middle level. The points rewarded for swimming class were completely out of his reach. Also, because his science grades were dragging him down, his academic performance could only rank in the middle as well. However, there's no need to rush either way. After all, private universities don't have high requirements. His dream is also to be a house husband. As long as he goes with the flow and does his best, it's fine. Of course. There's also no need to deliberately score low and cause trouble for the class either. After swimming class was math class. Hikigai was the first one back in the classroom, waiting for class while lost in thought. Although class B had some flaws, everyone was listening attentively. The worst performer was undoubtedly him. The people in this class are too outstanding. Why is it that none of you ever seem to get tired? The only thing that hasn't changed. All right, all right, I get it. Feeling someone poking his spine again. Hikigaya bends down to pick up the pen and places it back on the Shiren Army's table. Shiren Army Chihiro. You're being a bit too careless. You know, it's easy for bad people to deceive you like this. 
it's really worrisome. After school. Watching Hikigaya leave the classroom alone, Kanzaki frowns and turns back. Domino, do you have a moment to spare? Hm, sure. The two of them head to the corridor. Himono Yuki follows him to a deserted corner with a puzzled look on her face. Himono. Kanzaki asks with some confusion, did you notice anything off about Hikigaya today? Why are you asking me? Himono Yuki forces a smile, her face darkening slightly. She's somewhat speechless. She barely spoke to that introverted guy. How could she possibly know? It's not for any particular reason. Kanzaki says somewhat helplessly, I sit in front of him and can't observe his changes. You sit next to him, so you should be able to notice something, right? Himono Yuki speaks frankly, I've spoken less to him than you have with the Aki knows. How could I possibly know? Besides, isn't it bad to talk about others behind their backs? I know. Kanzaki nods solemnly, but have you noticed that Yaki nose was a bit off today? She seemed distracted. Indeed. Himono Yuki nods. She had indeed noticed this. Yaki nose usually maintains a heartwarming smile and is always energetic and cheerful. But today, she occasionally became silent. Not just her, others must have noticed something too. Does this have anything to do with Hikigaya? It seems so. Kanzaki ponders. There was no problem when the three of us were eating at Pallet Cafe yesterday. I don't know what happened between them afterwards. But when I left, I found out that Hikigaya had paid the bill. I feel like I might have misjudged him. Kanzaki had initially thought that Hikigaya was someone who liked to take advantage of others and didn't understand the atmosphere. But after finding out that he had paid the bill, Kanzaki felt that something was off. I see. Himono Yuki nods thoughtfully. Indeed, Iaki knows did greet them and she also specifically interacted with Ikigaya. She just felt that this guy was somewhat arrogant. Once was enough for her. No one likes to keep throwing themselves at someone who doesn't care. But since it involves Iaki knows, Himono Yuki is also somewhat worried. After pondering for a moment, she says, I didn't talk to him today either, so I'm not sure. But if there's any change, I feel like he seems more natural than before. More relaxed. Can you be more specific? Kanzaki has a bit of a headache. This is what happens when you discuss issues with girls, it's so troublesome. I can't express it more specifically, it's just a feeling. Could you please come with me to find Hikigaya? No matter what. In Kanzaki's eyes. Iaki knows has such excellent leadership skills and is the best candidate for the leader of class B. She can't just let her continue to be depressed like this. Even as a friend, he is worried about Iaki knows. But he's already gone home. Himono Yuki tactfully refuses. Although she is also a bit worried about Yaki knows, she doesn't want to interact with that introverted guy. It's fine. Kanzaki turns round and leaves, signaling her to follow, let's go. I can guess where he is. Himono Yuki drops her shoulders in disappointment. Although everyone in class B is pretty nice, except for that introverted guy, why don't they listen to others? She has already refused like this, why don't these people understand? Chapter 19 Chapter 019, President Yaki Knows. Special Teaching Building, 5th Floor. Classroom 5 to 4. It seems that there are plenty of vacant classrooms. Perhaps Commander Horikita wants to minimize the impact of his money plundering scheme. There aren't many people on this floor, and no clubs can be seen. The staircase is just next door. Ikigai Hakuman arrives outside the classroom, takes out a key, and opens the room. He got the key when he went to the student council room at noon. Although the club has not been officially established, the classroom can still be used. As long as two people are recruited by the end of April, it's fine. Otherwise, it will be taken back. Such a system. It seems to give those who want to establish a club some time to prepare. In addition, this school's clubs do not require a teacher to act as an advisor. Everything depends on oneself. But if needed, the school can arrange coaches, nutritionists, team doctors, club managers, etc such extravagance. He has also come to understand this school. Most things are handled by students themselves, with sufficient assistance provided. It's like simulating a small society. Each class is like a company competing with each other. It's all about supremacy. The purpose of establishing this school is probably to cultivate students into elite corporate slaves. How terrifying. Hikigaya walks into the classroom with a sense of helplessness. Forced to experience the grind of corporate life before even reaching adulthood, Japan truly proves to be a merciless country. 
This is too much. But correspondingly, I believe that as long as one possesses enough strength, they can lead a highly comfortable life in this school. But for him, a weakling, he still has some self-awareness and knows his limits. It's enough to just go with the flow and slack off. Slacking off at work. This is an essential skill for becoming an excellent corporate slave. Fortunately, his president Yakinos doesn't seem to be a heartless boss and probably won't fire employees casually. Then he can slack off as much as he wants. If he can just get promoted to class A and do the opportunity to choose his career freely, there's nothing happier than getting something for nothing. It's great to be assigned to class B. Hikigaya looks forward to his future life with anticipation. Inside the classroom. It's quite empty, with a few desks and chairs piled up in the back. For other equipment. You need to apply to the school according to club activities, but basically anything related to club activities will be approved. As long as you write a good article, you won't lack praise from your boss. But any equipment, such as computers and game consoles, are strictly prohibited from being taken out of school. Hikigaya moves the desks and chairs to the center of the classroom. For him. Whether or not the sheep shearing club can be established doesn't matter much. Whether it's in the dormitory or at school, there's not much difference. It just slightly improves living conditions. You can freeload nutritious meals. If you don't mind leftovers, you can even freeload three meals a day. You can also freeload computers and handheld game consoles and other entertainment tools. Because all of this falls within the scope of the sheep shearing club's activities. However, all of these seem somewhat unrelated. Therefore, as for finding people to join the club, he doesn't take it very seriously. Everything depends on fate. Anyway, there are already two people in Sheep Shearing Club now, he should thank Hiro Kanzaki for this. In addition, if a club is established, the student council seems to conduct random inspections. If you're often absent, it's likely that your club will be cancelled. After tidying up everything, Hikigai leans back in his chair. He doesn't regret what he did yesterday. On the contrary, it makes him feel more relaxed inside. Knock knock knock. At this moment, there's a knock on the door. Hikigaya looks at it somewhat unexpectedly, come in. It seems that, even in a top national school with so many outstanding individuals, there are still many people like him who want to slack off. Who wouldn't like sheep shearing club? As the door swings open, the hero Kanzaki and, black cat girl, come into view. Is this some kind of joke? Himano Yuki is somewhat speechless, not expecting Kanzaki to actually find him. On the other side, Hikigaya Hakuman is even more surprised. Why are they here? Could it be that Kanzaki has already developed a sense of being a formal member of the Sheep Shearing Club and is actively recruiting for him? As expected of a hero Kanzaki. Sit down. Hikigaya moves two chairs for them to the sides of the square table, then excitedly rummages through his bag for the application forms. Unexpectedly. The requirement of three formal members was met so easily. In his eyes. No one can resist the temptation of sheep shearing club. Um. Hikigaya hands the application form to the black cat girl, forgetting her name for a moment, and quickly corrects himself. The club doesn't have any particular requirements. You don't have to come regularly. It would be best if you didn't come. Hikigaya hints wildly. Kanzaki doesn't look like someone who would come to the club. He's just a ghost member. This way, he can monopolize the club funds for three people and buy whatever he wants. Certainly, it is entirely feasible to allocate funds for an individual. Question mark. Himanoyuki takes the application form, her head full of question marks. Ah, Hikigaya-kun, I didn't bring her here to join the club. Kanzaki quickly explains from the side, we came to ask about Iakinose's situation. What? And here I was getting all excited for nothing. Hearing this, Hikigaya is somewhat speechless. This leaves Kanzaki even more stunned, as he begins to understand what Himanoyuki meant by natural. It seems Hikigaya has become more direct. In fact, after making everything clear with Iakinos, he had made the decision to no longer be concerned about anyone's feelings and to embrace his true self. On the other side, Himanoyuki also widens her eyes. Is he being this straightforward? Talk about Iakinos? Hikigaya asks with some confusion, but I don't have much to do with her. Yugi's should know her better than I do. That should be the case. Kanzaki nods indifferently, but we felt that Yakinos seemed a bit down today. Do you have any thoughts on this? Or rather, what did you say to her after we parted ways yesterday? 
I see. Hikigai murmurs to himself. In that case, it probably does have something to do with him. He just didn't expect that Hiakinos wouldn't tell anyone else about these things and would bear them alone. It can be said that she took care of his reputation within the class. Although it sounds a bit narcissistic. There likely isn't any other plausible explanation. She really is a gentle and strong person. It seems you do know something. Kanzaki's face becomes serious, and Himanoyuki also looks at him scrutinizingly from the side. If they had to choose between him and Yaki Nose, they would undoubtedly stand on Yaki Nose's side without hesitation. Well, I guess so. Having decided to lay make everything clear, Hikigaya no longer has any intention of pretending. He takes a deep breath and repeats what he said to Yaki Nose yesterday. If you're only being nice to me out of pity, I'd rather you didn't. Hikigaya gazes at the table and speaks in a low voice. He's prepared for Kanzaki and whoever else to scold him. This is the price he should pay. So that's what you said to Iaki knows. No wonder she seemed so down today. Kanzaki looks slightly complicated and apologizes after hesitating for a moment. I'm sorry. It seems we were inconsiderate and ended up hurting you. Huh? Hikigaya lifts his head slightly. He never expected that they would apologize first. Himanoyuki, who was ready to scold him just now, is even more stunned. Aren't they supposed to scold him at this point? But. Kanzaki continues with a serious look in his eyes. Hikigaya kun, you should know that no matter whether Iaki knows is acting out of pity or some other reason, she definitely doesn't mean to hurt you. That's right. Whether it's out of pity or sympathy. Iaki knows definitely doesn't mean to hurt him. Yeah. I know. Hikigaya nods and takes a deep breath. Don't worry, I'll handle it properly. Iaki knows definitely doesn't mean to hurt him, but his words undoubtedly hurt Iaki knows, which is why she's so down. Since he caused the problem, he should fix it. Chapter 20, Chapter 020, Himanoyuki is so scary. After saying that, Kanzaki left the classroom. However, Himanoyuki inexplicably stayed behind, staring the dead fish eyes in front of her for a while. What are you doing? Hikigaya felt somewhat uncomfortable being stared at. If she wanted to stand up for Iaki nose, she should just start scolding directly. What did this constant staring mean? I didn't expect. Himanoyuki said in a somewhat surprised tone, Hikigaya, you're quite impressive. Huh? Hikigaya responded with some bewilderment, what nonsense are you talking about? What's impressive about me? After all, he was in the wrong. And couldn't say anything to refute it. Well, that's true. Himanoyuki propped her cheek and scrutinized him as if she wanted to see him thoroughly, but not everyone has the courage to reject your keynotes, at least not in class B. Aren't you afraid of being ostracized by your classmates? Or do you not feel guilty? None of your business. Hikigaya said in a bad tone, I've been alone since elementary school and I'm used to it. In fact, I prefer to be free on my own. What's wrong with this person? She asked such tricky questions to a stranger at their first meeting. It was as if she was deliberately exposing people's wounds. Isn't that too much? Naturally, he wouldn't give her a good face. As for guilt, well, there is a bit. Otherwise, he wouldn't have thought about solving it. Ah. Feeling Hikigaya's displeasure, Himanoyuki was slightly stunned and then pouted her mouth and said, By the way, have you been alone before? Don't you have any friends? Why should I tell you these things? Hikigaya said unhappily. This person is really too much. She specializes in exposing people's wounds. Just say it. It won't cost you anything. I won't tell you. Hikigaya doesn't have the hobby of sharing his dark history with others, especially this unfamiliar black cat. TSK. Himanoyuki crossed her legs and muttered a word. She withdrew her gaze and looked at the application form in her hand. Sheep shearing club? What does it do? Can't you see it? If I could see it, would I still ask you? It can't be for studying knitting sweaters, right? Ah. Uh. Hikigaya was choked for a moment. He was sure that this little black cat must be pretending to be good person in class. Her character is too bad. However. A pair of smooth and delicate legs crossed roundly, revealing the mysterious area inside. He just found out now. Apart from her bad character, the little black cat is surprisingly beautiful. Speaking of which. The average appearance of this school is already very high. Seeing that she seems to be interested in joining the club. Hikigaya patiently explained, well, the club's activities cover various fields. In essence, 
It's a club that excels in handling school funds for personal purposes and obtaining various equipment for free. Huh? Fumino Yuki looked at him somewhat surprisedly. I didn't expect that you are quite smart. It's incredible that the student council can let such a club pass. Well, Ikigaya said maliciously, after all, it doesn't cost them any money. Maybe the student council using school fund even more ruthlessly. Indeed. Fumino Yuki nodded when she heard this. After all, no one would dislike free things. If there is a chance, the student council will definitely use its power for personal gain. The two people's views surprisingly coincide. Just a ghost member? Himono Yuki unceremoniously took the stationary box in front of Hikigaya and took out a pen. Well. Hikigaya hesitated briefly, as if making a firm decision, if it's just a single person's budget, I suppose I can provide it for you. Huh? Who wants that? Himono Yuki signs her name with a flourish, saying somewhat speechlessly, with this time, it would be better to go out and play. We're not short of points, are you an idiot? For ordinary students. Spending personal time to take advantage of freebies is indeed a loss. Isn't it more enjoyable to eat with friends? Ha! Huh. Hikigaya breathes a sigh of relief. As long as she doesn't grab his funding, it's fine. Unexpectedly. Getting three official members was surprisingly easy. He has to thank the little black cat for his help. However. This girl personality is really bad. One second she's praising him for being smart, the next she's calling him an idiot. That should be enough. Himono Yuki hands him the application form, then suddenly pulls it back and places it on the table, saying with some confusion. But speaking of which, you haven't called her by their name until now. You wouldn't have forgotten, would you? Ha ha ha. Hikigai laughs dryly. How could that be possible? What's my name? Himono Yuki looks at him with a teasing gaze, seemingly enjoying seeing him embarrassed. Speaking of which, he can't even remember a name and has managed to bluff his way through until now. That's really impressive. Ah. Hikigaya falls into thought for a moment before raising a finger triumphantly. Of course I know. You're Hankawa Kuro, right? It's Himono Yuki. Himono Yuki says with a darkened face. She had even worried about the embarrassment of not being able to call out her desk mate's name and had specifically asked the teacher about it. This guy just doesn't remember. His personality is simply abhorrent to the extreme. That being said. Although getting the name wrong isn't anything shocking. But her name is clearly Himono Yuki, so why would there be any association with the word Kuro, Black? Himono Yuki really can't figure this out. Is. Is that so? Hikigaya argues, I remember, Himono Yuki, I remember. I just accidentally bit my tongue just now. As she said that. He quickly changes the subject and tentatively tries to take the application form from her hand. Anyway, thanks you. HMPH. Himono Yuki slaps the table and leaves the room with a cold snort. Watching her retreating figure, Hikigaya breathes a sigh of relief. In any case, one incompetent club president and two ghost members. The sheep shearing club was established just like that. Tomorrow he can finally improve his meals. It would be best to apply for a handheld console and computer from the school as well. This kind of life is simply perfect. Just at this moment, Himono Yuki sticks half her head out from outside the room, craning her neck back. It almost scares him. Remember my name well. It's Himono Yuki. If you dare get it wrong next time, I absolutely won't let you off, Hikigaya Hakuman. As she said that, Himono Yuki finally leaves the classroom. Listening to her gradually fading footsteps, he finally confirms that she has really left. That scared me. Hikigaya says somewhat speechlessly. That being said, how did Himono Yuki know that his name is Hikigaya Hakuman? When did he tell her his full name? He doesn't remember at all. Well. In any case. He should remember Himono Yuki's name well. Chapter 21, Chapter 021, Dispelling Misunderstanding, The First Gift. The next day, Friday. The class obviously doesn't know about the club yet. Kanzaki and Himono Yuki are trustworthy people, otherwise, he wouldn't be able to relax like this. Hikigaya's life remains unchanged. In the classroom, Himono Yuki still doesn't interact with him, instead pretending not to see him, which makes Hikigaya reaffirm that this girl is just pretending to be a good person. Throughout the day, Ayaki knows is always surrounded by classmates, she is worthy of being a top student. Until after school, that he finally finds an opportunity. He cautiously and covertly walks up behind her and lowers his voice. Ayaki knows, can I bother you for a moment? 
After all, he has already caused harm to Yakinos. It wouldn't be surprising if he was rejected, so he's prepared for a long battle. A. Yakinos makes an unusual sound and appears surprised. Does this guy move without a sound? R. It turns out to be Hikigayakun. You scared me. Yakinos also lowers her voice. Sure. Actually, I have something to say to Hikigaya too. Oh? Is that so? Thank you. Hikigaya nods unexpectedly, puts his hands in his pockets and walks towards the school gate. Iakinos hesitates for a moment before walking beside him. Both of them stay quiet, creating a somewhat awkward atmosphere. Iakinos's face shows a complex mix of emotions, leaving her unsure of how to speak. However, it seems like Hikigaya is not too concerned, so she also remains silent. In less than a moment, the two of them arrive at the back of the teaching building. If the two of them were to leisurely stroll through the Kiaki Mall shopping center, it might lead to unnecessary trouble for Iakinos. So, they went for the nearest spot. Ikigaya stops, takes out a fairly exquisite gift box from his bag, and hands it to Iakinos. As an apology. This is a gift he picked out at the convenience store last night. It's not too expensive. Just a 2,000 private points fountain pen. This can be seen as a small gesture of his apology. His relationship with Iakinos is nothing more that. What is this? Iakinos is somewhat puzzled. Well, how should I put it? Hikigaya chooses his words carefully, consider it an apology. I'm sorry for what I said to you the day before yesterday. But you don't need to worry about me specifically. Let's call it even, okay? While he may have unintentionally hurt Iakinos, he doesn't require her sympathy. This way, they can both move forward. Iakinos gazes at the gift box before her, motionless for an extended period. Hikigaya feels somewhat powerless. Once a vase is shattered, it cannot be repaired. I'm sorry, but I can't accept this gift. Iakinos shakes her head slightly. I see. Hikigaya lowers his arm without taking it too much to heart. After all, he has done what he should do. Whether or not she accepts it is up to her. Just as he was about to leave, he heard Iakinos continue. I've been thinking about what you said the day before yesterday these past two days. The more I think about it, the more I feel that you're right. Maybe some part of me did want Ikigaya to fit into the class out of sympathy and used an imperfect method that hurt Hikigaya's pride, so, I should be the one apologizing. No. Not at all. My pride isn't that fragile. Really. There's no such thing as pride. Hikigaya avoids eye contact, even so, your original intention was not malicious at all. I also said some things that hurt you. I should be the one apologizing. But it's also true that my actions hurt Hikigaya. Iakinos shakes her head slowly and starts looking for something in her bag. No. No. Hikigaya is somewhat speechless. He has his own principles, and this girl just won't listen. So he defends himself. My heart is not that weak, and I'm not hurt at all, compared to junior school. These are things are trivial, so Iakinos doesn't need to apologize. Indeed. Iakinos doesn't know about his past either. She takes out a delicate gift box and hands it to him. I don't know about your past, Hikigaya-kun. Maybe these things are trivial to you, but I feel that I've hurt you, and isn't that why you wanted to apologize to me? So, can you accept this gift? Otherwise, I might not be able to forgive myself. Iakinos holds the delicate gift box in both hands and presents it to Hikigaya. Her words leave Hikigaya frozen in place. Indeed. Both of them want to apologize because they feel they've hurt the other. However. If he doesn't accept this gift. Iakinos won't forgive herself, but he will not take it to heart. After all, their relationship is just so-so. As for whether it can go further, Hikigaya doesn't care much. However, unlike false gentleness, Iakinos is a truly gentle girl. Not only kind, she's also a good girl who dares to face herself and bravely confront everything. Judging from this gift, even if he didn't speak up today, Iakinos would find an opportunity to apologize to him. For a moment. Hikigaya is slightly stunned. After a while, he takes the gift box from her hand and nods. All right. Iakinos once again restores her warm smile like a spring breeze and gently takes the gift box from his right hand that belongs to her. So we're even now. Well, yes. Hikigaya is still somewhat stunned. He accepted Iakinos's apology, and Iakinos also accepted his apology. Indeed, they're even now. In middle school, 
There were also gentle people who greeted him occasionally because of their gentleness. However, he knows very well. Aoki Nose's gentleness is different from theirs. So, Aoki Nose shows a brilliant smile, Hikigaya-kun, can we become friends starting today? Well, if you don't mind. Hikigaya said somewhat embarrassedly. That's great. Aoki Nose smiles and nods, thank you for your gift. But I'm sorry, I have an appointment with Chihiro and the others today, so I'll go first. As she said that, Aoki Nose turns around and leaves with a light jog, leaving Hikigaya standing alone. But this way, Hikigaya feels more comfortable. Back in the dormitory, Hikigaya sits on the bed and opens the gift box from Aoki Nose. Inside, there's a pendant featuring a cheerful smile, likely intended as a backpack decoration. Adjacent to it is a fan card with the message, smile more for greater happiness. Who would carry such a thing? It's too embarrassing. Hikigaya blushes slightly and is somewhat speechless. He can't use such an embarrassing thing on his backpack. But, since it's gift from someone, and it seems like it's the first time in his life that he has received a gift from someone else, he should keep it well. Chapter 22, Chapter 022, Unexpected Encounter the detestable wicked woman the strongest day of the week is Saturday. Having a day of rest followed by another day of rest, it's fantastic, isn't it? But Sunday is the opposite. Although it's also a rest day like Saturday, the pressure of having to work tomorrow makes one feel melancholic. The first week after enrollment passed just like that. Saturday. Hikigaya didn't wake up until noon. He's almost used to this kind of solitary life. Aoki knows his words remain quite reasonable. Although the school uniform is free, and the quality is good, it's not comfortable enough as home clothes. Indeed, a few casual clothes are needed. Kiaki Mall Shopping Center. Students are constantly moving, sometimes, with loud laughter. It's only the first week of school. Students who have earned many personal points tend to spend extravagantly. Hikigaya puts his hands in his pockets and comes to the mall listlessly. There are only about ten clothing stores. It's quite enough for boys but probably not enough for girls. However, it seems that there are new arrivals every month, so it's not a big problem. Just at this moment, a pair of twin ponytails enters his line of sight. She has a tall figure, round and full legs. Her upturned eyes have a dead fish eye feeling, which is similar to him in a different way. The two accidentally make eye contact. R? Himono Yuki looks somewhat surprised with her mouth slightly open, then she looks somewhat angry. Hikigai in front of her just turned around and left. Why did you suddenly run away? Himono Yuki quickly catches up and lightly punches him in the waist. There's no particular need to strike up a conversation. Hikigai explains helplessly for a few sentences. This guy usually pretends not to see him. Why is it different today? Is it because she's alone? Thinking about it, Hikigai secretly observes his surroundings. Sure enough, he doesn't see Aki knows and others. He is specifically considering her feelings, not because this girl is troublesome or anything like that. Huh? Himono Yuki is surprised. Her gaze turns intense. I hope you haven't forgotten my name. Huh? How could that be? Hikigaya quickly admits defeat and says in a panic, Himono Yuki-san, right? Feel free to call me Himono. Himono nods slightly satisfied, but seeing an acquaintance and turning around to leave, Hikigaya, you're really rude. You have the nerve to say that to me? This girl is really scary. Indeed, all girls are unreasonable. Ha ha ha. Hikigai laughs dryly, so do you have anything to do? In other words, if there's nothing else, please go away and don't disturb his shopping. Hikigaya. Himono Yuki doesn't seem to understand, why are you here? It sounds like how could someone like you appear here? Is it an illusion? I'm buying some casual clothes. Hikigai laughs dryly. Huh? Himono Yuki is slightly stunned, really? I thought someone like you would definitely just want to stay in the dormitory, playing games and reading some unhealthy H-books. It's been a week already. The term otaku would never come out of Hyanko Yuki's mouth under normal circumstances. It is to be said. I have to say. The overall quality of Class B is very high. Most people wouldn't directly say otaku, but rather evaluate it as mature and steady. Even his evaluation in the class seems to be mature and steady, somewhat adult-like. As for whether they really think so? Of course not. The presence of him and Oyuki right in front of him is the best proof that at least some people are forced to put on a good boy, girl act under the influence of Yaki knows. 
Andrea Kinos's influence. Fitting in with the class is important. Although the first half is correct, the second half is completely wrong, after all, there are people like Komaki at home. In order to avoid bringing a bad influence to Komaki. He wouldn't watch such things at home, and he doesn't have friends to share these kinds of books with, so he simply doesn't read them, but he still plays games. You could be a little more polite to me. Hikigaya's face darkens. Huh? How could I possibly be polite to you? Humanoyuki says somewhat disdainfully, I came here to shop too, so you can come with me. You can also serve as my advisor. Hikigaya sighs weakly. It's not that he can't understand. In class B, he is undoubtedly at the bottom of the class. Even if you were to expose Himonoyuki's act of pretending to be a good girl, he might be perceived as jealous and conniving, spreading rumors behind people's backs. So, that's why Himonoyuki can be so unscrupulous in front of him, treating him like a servant. No way, I still have to go shopping for clothes. Hikigaya refuses without hesitation. Come on, come on, I'll help you with your shopping later, that should be okay. Just like before. His opinions are never taken into account. However, this is quite fair. Ordinary girls would probably use him as an ATM and leave as soon as they've used him up. All right. Hikigaya spreads his palms. Himonoyuki seems to have just bought some shopping bags in her hand. It's polite to help girls carry heavy things. Hikuman is a gentleman indeed. You do know quite a bit. Himonoyuki unceremoniously stuffs things into his hands, treating him completely like a servant. Where should we go first? I haven't had lunch yet. The implication, time is limited, hurry up and get it done so I can go back to the dormitory quickly. Shopping for clothes doesn't take much time for him anyway. In that case, let's go eat first. I want to try the fish rice here. Hey. This girl seems a bit lacking in IQ. That won't work. If we're seen eating together and people talk about it, it would be too embarrassing. Hikigaya still plans to argue a bit more. Huh? The school is so big. It should be quite common to run into each other occasionally. If you believe that simply running into each other implies a close relationship, that's rather naive, isn't it? Himonoyuki raises her hand indifferently. That makes sense. Hikigaya is instantly refuted. The other party has obviously considered this point, but this school cannot be viewed with common sense. Being discovered can also be explained by being in the same class and club. Although she's not very smart, she seems to have her own little cleverness in interpersonal relationships. Just as well Hikigaya was planning to improve his diet anyway. After lunch, Himonoyuki opting for the split bill system was a big relief for Hikigaya. Thankfully, she wasn't the type of woman who treated men like ATMs. But just treating him as a servant is annoying enough already. Damn it. He was almost fooled by this woman. Chapter 23, Chapter 023, The World's Cutest Bad Woman in terms of physical strength. Women are not as strong as men, this is an absolute truth. The evidence is right in front of us, Himonoyuki has been shopping for two hours, and she is currently holding a white off-shoulder dress in front of a full-length mirror. Meanwhile, Hikigaya is already sitting on a sofa nearby, exhausted. He was too careless. This is simply unfair. The key point is that she hasn't bought anything up to now. Who knows how long she will continue shopping like this. If you like it, why not just buy it? Hikigaya looked at the price tag on the dress. Although 5,000 is a bit expensive, it's not an unaffordable price, right? Although he didn't quite understand these inexplicable brands. But summer clothes are generally around 500 points, and women's clothes might be slightly more expensive, but they shouldn't be this expensive. This should belong to some kind of light luxury brand. Usually, it's a price that high school students can't afford. But in this school, we just received 100,000 points, this is completely within the range of consumption. It can't be used up in less than a week, right? No way. If I buy this one, I'm done for the month. Himonoyuki seemed somewhat reluctant to part with the dress as if she remembered something. She furrowed her brows and turned back with some confusion. Speaking of which, we handed over 70,000 points. Why do you still think this is an affordable price? Huh? Hikigaya was slightly stunned from the sound of it. Did they really hand over their personal points to Iakinos for safekeeping? Really? He originally thought that this class was indeed very excellent and kind, but now it feels a bit naive. What if Iakinos takes these personal points for herself? Although he doesn't think Iakinos would do such a thing. 
but this is equivalent to handing over your salary to a colleague for safekeeping and putting your fate in the hands of others. This is simply naive to an outrageous extent. It's something he absolutely couldn't do. Ah. Ikigaya said somewhat awkwardly, isn't that based on the principle of voluntariness? Huh? Himano Yuki's eyes widened. She walked up to him and looked him up and down incredulously. You didn't hand it? Yeah. Ikigaya nodded. Perhaps Yakinos also heard his refusal and didn't come to ask him again, right? She shouldn't have excluded him from the class, right? No way? Nah, probably not. Yakinos definitely wouldn't do such a thing as excluding people, right? If he were excluded by someone as gentle as Yakinos, he would really feel like dying. Amazing. Himono Yuki hesitated for a moment before praising. Although Hikigaya was known to be a person who dared to refuse, it was surprising that he was so assertive, even daring to refuse such a matter. What's so impressive about that? Hikigaya said indifferently, if you don't want to contribute, then you don't have to, right? Obviously, from the conversation, it could be felt that Himonoyuki also didn't want to contribute. I just can't do that. Himonoyuki sat down next to Hikigaya, covering her forehead with her hand somewhat speechlessly, it was just that kind of atmosphere at the time. Although I also think that Yakinos won't embezzle the points, but I'm still a bit speechless. How could they happily hand over the money to Yakinos for safekeeping? They should at least hesitate a bit, right? This is the consequence of pretending to be good. You deserve it. However, from another perspective, judging him and Ayuki's performance just now, she indeed belongs to the type that is not rational enough as described by Kanzaki. He would definitely not buy clothes for 5,000 points. It is indeed more beneficial than harmful to have Yakinos manage the points. Hikigaya gloated, I won't pay for you. I don't want your money. Himono Yuki rolled her eyes in a sassy manner and said, I mean, Hikigaya, are you trying to tell me you're aiming to collect the 20 million point to upgrade to class A right? How is that possible? Hikigaya disdainfully said, aren't points convertible into cash after graduation? It's enough to rely on Yakinos to upgrade to class A. With this money, I can live a worry-free life for a while and find a rich woman to become a house husband. I can play for a while longer. Ah. Himono Yuki was obviously startled. You really are despicable. None of your business. Ikigai took a sip of the milk tea in his hand. Max coffee hasn't arrived yet, so for now, this can only serve as a temporary substitute. Although he can make his own knockoffs. But once or twice is fine, any more than that would be too troublesome. Forget it. I've known for a long time that you're a despicable guy. Himono Yuki got up and smoothed her skirt. All right, let's go. Let me show you some more clothes. Eh? Aren't you buying anything? Huh? Himono Yuki turned back somewhat puzzled. Didn't I say at the beginning? I came here to go shopping. I bought casual clothes with the Akinos and the others a few days ago. Then what the hell are you shopping for? The shopping in girls' mouths is really just shopping. Hikigaya really couldn't understand. Hey, are you serious? Outside the clothing store, Himono Yuki looked at Hikigaya beside her, somewhat speechless. The school also provides free clothing. After all, they can't let students who lose their points freeze to death. But the styles are not flattering. Simply put, they are styles that have been out of fashion for several years or those regional types of clothes that make people feel ashamed when they wear them. Although it's free and unlimited. But if you throw it around at will it's likely to be directly reflected in the class points. The surveillance in the shop suggests such a possibility. As long as the clothes are comfortable to wear, isn't that enough? Hikigaya walked into the store indifferently and easily picked out a black and white grey solid colour three-piece set from a pile of clothes. Sorry, do you have these three in size 175? Please wait a moment, I'll get it for you right away. So old-fashioned. Himono Yuki couldn't help but comment, you must be an otaku who stays in your dormitory all day and doesn't go out. None of your business. As long as the clothes are comfortable enough, don't we usually have school uniforms? Hikigaya defended himself. Usually his mother and Komaki bought his clothes for him. Although he didn't think highly of his mother's taste in clothes, he indeed didn't have any taste in picking out clothes himself. Forget it. Himono Yuki, holding her forehead as if she had a headache, said, let me choose for you. No need. I'm fine with this. All right, all right. Himono Yuki picked up a blue long-sleeved shirt and gestured in front of him. Stand up straight, don't move, at least you have to dress like a human. Oh. 
Hikigaya stood still, staring at him and Ayuki's pretty face. Seeing her serious expression, Hikigaya couldn't help but shut his mouth. Did he misunderstand her? This girl is actually not bad. In the end, Himanoyuki chose a beige pair of trousers and a blue shirt for him. Although he didn't understand the difference. But after all, the conditions are limited, if you want to look good, you have to spend some points. She didn't ask him to go next door to buy clothes, just used the existing conditions to make a not bad match. This sense of distance made him feel pretty good. Chapter 24, Chapter 024, A Useful Shield Mid-April As time passes, the discomfort people experience when encountering unfamiliar surroundings gradually subsides into tranquility. The students of class B have all made their own friends, happily enjoying school life. The only abnormality is that this class is a bit peculiar. Ordinary classes usually divide into several groups. There are the popular groups, the groups ready to take their place, the homebody groups, everyone has their own close friends, and all kinds of lone wolves. But class B presents a harmonious picture. No matter which group, they can communicate amicably, and the role of Yaki knows is irreplaceable in this. Although he doesn't know where the problem lies, there is definitely a problem. All of these cannot escape the eyes of Hikigaya, a human appraiser. It's as if they're challenging his worldview. Impossible. Absolutely impossible. You say there's one person that have problem? Oh. It turns out to be me. Apart from Yaki knows greeting him. Class B seems to have defaulted him as a guy who likes to be alone, so there's no communication. His life is generally a straight line between school and dormitory, or borrowing a few books from the library to read in the club. That being said, the work efficiency of this school is too slow. Apart from food ingredients, considering cost savings, other things seem to be purchased once a month. Today is the 16th day without Max coffee. If you ask him why he knows these things, it was when he returned the club application form and asked Commander Horikita. Commander Horikita frankly told him the answer. Equipment needs to be applied for after all clubs are established. It seems to be a unified cost reduction and efficiency increase. After all, there are new ones and those that need to be replenished. It has to be after the end of April. Running a school is not an easy task. Special teaching building, fifth floor. In front of the classroom door are three big characters, sheep shearing club. Hikigaya is fiddling with three nutritional meals, which are tonight's dinner and tomorrow's breakfast and lunch respectively. Although the taste isn't great and the quantity isn't quite enough, it's just about right with free toast and eggs. Treat yourself on weekends. Little by little, this way you can save a lot of money too. Hikigaya sits in his chair tapping his leg, holding toast in one hand and flipping through a book in the other hand. Wow. Just at this moment, Himanoyuki opens the door and makes a strange sound. Huh? Hikigaya lifts his eyelids somewhat speechless. What are you doing? What? Himanoyuki walks over to sit down across from him, somewhat bored. I was sure you'd be doing something weird sitting alone in the classroom. I wanted to give you a scare but it turned out so ordinary. How boring. HLNN. Hikigaya eats his toast nonchalantly. What are you doing here? The implication is, be sensible and go back quickly. Ha. Huh. Himanoyuki lets out a heavy sigh, her delicate form resting on the table, her marshmallow inevitably squished into a lump. I'm really fed up. Iaki knows and everyone make me party every day. I'm almost dead tired. Ordinary people might suspect she's showing off. But knowing Himanoyuki, Hikigaya suspects she's probably here seeking refuge. Well. Hikigaya couldn't help but be drawn in, and with an indifferent tone, he said, since they've invited you, doesn't that mean you have a good relationship with them? Why not just participate openly? Just once would be fine. Himanoyuki was somewhat speechless, but after the first meeting, there will be a second, a third, every day it goes on until nine at night. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? Nine o'clock at night. After washing up, one would probably have to go straight to sleep, without any personal time left. No wonder Himanoyuki sought refuge here. If it were him, he would probably just leave. No. If he were at the gathering, it would definitely cool down quickly. There wouldn't be a second time. What? It turns out I'm the most formidable one. The ultimate party pooper. If you don't like it, just refuse directly. Hikigaya looked at the novel in his hand, maintaining an indifferent attitude throughout. It's just that I can't do it that's giving me a headache. Himanoyuki rolled her eyes beautifully, you know this and yet you still say such things, 
your character is truly despicable to the extreme. I suppose so. All right. He admitted it, he did it on purpose. Seeing him in Oyuki's miserable state, he couldn't help but want to laugh. Serves you right for pretending to be good person and using me as a servant. Never mind. Him and Oyuki stood up, causing a slight tremor in her chest, after the club activities are over, you'll go back with me. Eh? Hikigaya couldn't help but look over, why? I mean I planned to go to the club today and then escaped. Him and Oyuki said somewhat impatiently, if people find out I'm alone, won't it be bad? This girl actually used his sheep shearing club as a shield. That's really too much. It seems that the activities of the sheep shearing club have added another item. Well, if it's just going back together, there's no problem. Hikigaya looked back at his book. Anyway, there are still a few days left to return the book. He was originally going straight back to the dormitory. Having one more person wouldn't make any difference. Do you eat these every day? Himonoyuki looked at the nutritional meal on the table. It only contained very ordinary corn and chicken breast and so on. Can your body handle it? It's fine. Anyway, I'll have a big meal on the weekend. Hikigaya said indifferently. The main reason is that Jiro Raymond is simply a heresy in the world of Raymond. Although the application for a hidden shop has also been approved. But considering the daily life of students, renovation can only be carried out during the summer vacation. Plus the trial operation stage, opening will probably have to wait until next semester. Is that so? Himonoyuki thought for a while with her cheek in her hand and then didn't care anymore. She asked about the club equipment again. After all, she is also a member of the sheep shearing club. Hikigaya, as the president of the department, had to inform her one by one. Himonoyuki took out her phone and started to entertain herself. Neither of them paid much attention to each other. But strangely enough, Hikigaya didn't feel awkward either. After all, he knew very well that Himonoyuki was just using him as a convenient shield. After the club activities ended. Ah, I'm exhausted. Himonoyuki stretched lazily, doing something she would never do in class, revealing her delicate figure without reservation. She really looked down on him. You were just playing with your phone, why are you get tired? Hikigaya stood up without any courtesy and said, hurry up and get out, I need to lock the door. After Himonoyuki left the classroom, Hikigaya locked the door. The two of them left the school side by side. Do you want to eat something before going back? Himonoyuki suggested. Don't you know that I've already had dinner? Hikigaya was somewhat speechless, on purpose. Eh? Himonoyuki looked at him with some surprise, I thought you were just snacking, can that be considered dinner? Well, eating a cup of instant noodles when I get back is about right. Hikigaya said indifferently. It seems that after living alone, he no longer had any demands for life. Most boys are like this, right? It's not just him, right? No way, no way. I'm telling you. Himonoyuki said somewhat speechlessly, at least you should eat some normal food, right? There's no need, as long as I'm full. A. Eh? Himonoyuki sighed, or is it better to let Iakinos and the others come? Please don't do that. Hikigaya laughed dryly. By the way. His body was no longer his own, but belonged to the class. If personal reasons affected the class, Iakinos and others would definitely not sit idly by. Himonoyuki must have thought the same way. In that case. Is Hakuman actually quite popular? Then let's have a pasta set meal. I haven't had dinner yet. Himonoyuki pointed to the pallet cafe next door and said. Even though she told him to take care of his body, her suggestion was still in the category of junk food. Although pastu is not considered junk food, it doesn't have much nutrition either. What does she mean? Forget it. Anyway, he didn't have any objections. Chapter 25, Chapter 025, A Fair Loss, Kushida Kikiyo, Pallid Cafe. The two of them casually found a spot and sat down. Hikigai ordered a cheese rice dish, given the cafe's limited options. Actually, in the absence of Raymond, he would rather have curry and fried chicken. A high school student's mind is full of junk food. Hikigaya, you're actually quite good looking. Himonoyuki ordered pasta, if you just dress up a bit, be more cheerful, you'd definitely be popular with girls. Why do you always have such a gloomy face? HLNN. Hikigaya silently ate his cheese rice with a twitch at the corner of his mouth. This girl is really too much. It's one thing to call him gloomy directly, but quite in a girl's mouth can basically be equated with ordinary. Just like nice guy in a girl's mouth, it's 100% a guy who's good in every way. 
the reference is his experience. This is just his usual state, he doesn't deliberately put on a face. Huh? You don't believe me? Mind reading? Can this girl read minds? Himano Yuki easily saw through his thoughts, her tone slightly dissatisfied. I did vote for you in the handsome guy ranking, by the way, I also voted for you in the gloomy ranking. Eh? Hikigaya was somewhat surprised, girls do that kind of thing too? Although he didn't know if the boys in class B did it, he had such an experience in junior high school. What do you mean to? Himano Yuki was taken aback, her eyes narrowed full of murderous intent. You guys aren't ranking girls too, are you? That's just scum. Hey, girls do the same thing. Woman is simply embodiment of a double standard. I don't know the specifics. Hikigaya explained somewhat speechlessly, then somewhat proudly said, You should know that I was ranked number one on the gloomy list in junior high school. He didn't know if he was being ostracized. Or if the boys in class B really were high quality, but no one came to him anyway. Number one on the gloomy list, I don't understand what there is to be proud of. Himano Yuki was even more speechless, shouldn't ordinary people care more about the handsome guy list? Do you want to guess what rank you are on that list? Hikigaya quickly came up with an answer while stroking his chin, around 15th place. Not narcissistic. But his little sister Komaki had said so. If it weren't for his dead fish eyes affecting his looks, he would definitely be a handsome guy. So you do have self-awareness. Himano Yuki was slightly surprised and then hit back, your 11th place. However, your fourth place on the gloomy list. There are probably 80 boys in the whole grade. Ranking 11th isn't bad, but it's not exactly handsome. Really? Hikigaya was somewhat unconvinced, I can't believe I'm only ranked 4th, who are the top 3? It's hard to believe that there could be someone more gloomy than him. You really are a strange fellow. Himano Yuki took a sip of her coffee and rolled her eyes beautifully. The first place is Anizuka from Class D, the second place is Kita Hayato from Class A, and the third place is Aiyanoku Jikiyataka from Class D. Ah. Hikigaya was slightly depressed. Let's not talk about Anizuka and Kita for now. After all, they are people from the demon family. It's only normal that they are gloomier than him. Backslash NTL slash N, Anizuka and Kita name have kanji which is literally means demon even if he were more arrogant. He wouldn't dare to compare himself with the people of the demon family. As for Aino Kuji Kiyotaka. For some reason. The first thing that came to his mind was that lunatic with dead fish eyes. It seems like, losing is unforgivable. Even his gloominess can't match others. There are too many excellent people in this school. Why did you become depressed? Looking at Hikigaya's slightly drooping shoulders, Himano Yuki was completely speechless, this guy's competitive consciousness is really abnormal. R. Heimko san, what a coincidence. At this moment, a sweet voice rang out. Hikigaya glanced sideways, and a beautiful girl with short yellow hair appeared before his eyes. She had brown short hair, skin as white as mutton fat, delicate features, and her wine red eyes seemed to be sparkling. She could compete with Aokinos. Most importantly, she gave people the feeling that she was very similar to Aokinos. Kushida san? How did you get here? Himano Yuki instantly put on a surprised and somewhat delighted smile, while giving Hikigaya a warning look. If you dare to expose me, you're done. I came here to eat with my friends. I just happened to see Himano san here too, so I wanted to come over and say hello. The girl named Kashida showed a sweet smile, glanced at Hikigaya with a slight sidelong glance, and hesitated. Have I interrupted your conversation? Huh? Hikigaya frowned imperceptibly. Anyway, even if he frowned with these dead fish eyes, no one would notice. Their location wasn't very hidden. If she was genuinely concerned about disturbing us, it might have been better for her not to approach us. What's going on with this girl? By the way, who is this person? How could that be? Himano Yuki quickly explained, this is Kashida Kikio from first year class D, and this is Hikigaya Hakuman, my classmate. Thanks to Himano Yuki's introduction. The relationship between the two was clearly explained. Classmates. In other words, she was telling Kashida Kikio not to make wild guesses. Hikigaya, Hakuman? Kashida Kikio was slightly confused, then her eyes lit up, she put her hands on her chest, and her fingertips met, looking very cute. I remember now, so you're called Hikigaya Hakuman. Hello. Hikigaya was somewhat surprised, do we know each other? You know each other? Himano Yuki looked at Hikigaya with some astonishment. 
This gloomy guy actually knows other people? Actually. Kushida Kikyo's pretty face blushed slightly, and she explained somewhat shyly. Actually, I was also on the bus on the first day of school. There was an old lady with mobility issues on the bus, but no one was willing to give up their seat. Just when I was about to help her, only Hikigaya kun voluntarily gave up his seat and moved to the back without asking for anything in return. It shows that Hikigaya kun is a very gentle person. So, from that day on, I've always wanted to get to know Hikigaya kun. After said that, Kushida Kikio stole a glance at Hikigaya. When their eyes met, her face turned red and she quickly looked down. If it were an ordinary boy, he might instantly think does she like me, take the initiative to exchange contact information, and then be so infatuated that he can't find his way. However, this couldn't escape the eyes of Hikigaya, a first-class bitch appraiser. He didn't expect that what happened that day would be seen by someone. And also, she spoke quite beautifully. Hikigaya, who gave up his seat, is a gentle person, so Kushida, who wanted to help, is also a gentle person. She mixed her own agenda into her truthful words, enriching her image as a gentle person. And also, it's been more than ten days since school started. There were countless opportunities to get to know him. Obviously in Kushida Kikyo's mind, getting to know him is not something that needs to be prioritized. She shouldn't have this kind of shy, nervous expression with sparkling eyes. She probably treats him as an ordinary male. Obviously. She is a bitch among bitch. High-grade bitch. 